Bam, we're live. Yes, we are. Good morning, KDI. Sheboygan. Sheboygan. I don't know what that means, but okay. Good morning, Ernie. Hey, what's up, dude? The real Kevin. Hey. It's funny that Froning goes live at the same time as Seven does. Oh. I don't think they go live. I'm going to see. I don't think they go live. I think the uncancelable crew um, is actually uh, cancelable. I think that is a, uh, might, might be a gimmick. Let me see. We should have Rich back on and ask him. Um, does Mayhem actually go live? They don't actually go live, right? No, they just do premieres all the time. Yeah, premieres. It's weird that people do premieres. I wonder if they know what they're doing. I was talking about this with uh, Hiller yesterday. CrossFit did a premiere yesterday and there were uh, 29 people watching and Hiller and I were like scratching our heads. Like uh, the good thing is, is if you do a premiere, you get uh, the, the, what the difference between a premiere and not a premiere is that basically the chat opens up so people can talk in real time, but the show is not actually live. So it's pre recorded. Yeah. And those, those messages don't get saved either. Like they don't mm -hmm. get, there are no comments. It's just disappears right. basically. Right. Yeah. And, and the goal is, um, that, I mean, theoretically, I don't know if anyone knows for sure, but Andrew, Andrew was explaining it to me yesterday. The goal is, is that when you have comments, uh, at the bottom of a YouTube video, what that does is that keeps people watching your video longer. That basically the whole, the algorithm doesn't necessarily look at comments, but it's, it's basically just on one thing is the thought, the conventional wisdom. It's the duration people spend watching your video then increases impressions and then the more people that increase your impressions you get pushed higher in the algorithm so there's probably it, it's probably the simple way to say it is is that the more views you get the, the more opportunities that people take to watch your video and the longer they stay watching your video are the two most important things and so if you do it, a premium it's always been that way for websites yeah hi you mean like for even Google uh, SEO search engine optimization was just how long they, they track how long you've been there? Google does? No, I mean we did for CrossFit.com. We knew what the oh. average length of engagement was, where they where they gave up, you know. If oh, you right, up, right. Put up 15 pages is something you could tell how many people <laughs> went to all 15 pages. Right, right. Are you at home? Yeah. Oh, I don't recognize your uh, oh 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 yes, yes, I do. <laughs> Is shut. Yeah, the classroom. Yeah, Hi. The school, the school is poured over. I think I'm claimed a new room. Like we don't have guests stay over here anymore. And <laughs> I've got I've got posters and violins and shit. It's great. I've, I've, I've conquered a room. Good on you. So you'll you have gotta a be whole house, right? Yeah. I, I bought a house and conquered the, one of the rooms. Susan, I'm sending you the. Uh, show notes all right you may have ruined flying for me greg holy oh, cow God. yeah i'm gonna watch that uh did you did, have you watched the al jazeera documentary I, that came out i wanna i wanna get on an airbus badly uh, how come i i think boeing has has the problems that it has from just you know the articles i sent you um I don't bode well. Yeah, but why do you want to get on one then? No, I don't. I'm an Airbus guy. Oh, I'm looking, oh, for, oh. looking for the competitors. Oh. Right. I don't want to, you know, we're going to Bora Bora. I don't want to do it on a Boeing. Um, uh, this it could, after it, it could be ignorance, but I don't like the kinds of problems. Look, let me tell you what it reminds me of, if I can. Okay, quick story. The long story. We got 90 minutes. Fill it, fill right. it up. Let's go. All right. So, you know, we we bought this house and then there was a leak for <laughs> all of a sudden. And, and it had with the first rain for whatever year that was, 2021. The first year rain of that year happened in November. They're having a uh, drought and it, it dripped water into the house. And we finally get to the it's coming from the little bit of rain we had went through a deck up top on the second floor and into the master bedroom. So we had to rip the walls open and, and 
the uh, Holdsworth's roofer uh, got on Google Earth and turned the clock back and watched him build the house and watched the orange membrane not get put down on the entire deck. He saw the inventory of membrane disappear and blah, blah, blah. The tile guys come. He watched the tile get set. You know, and this is just in these increments. It's a pretty cool thing to do, right? Forensic roofing. So the guys got busted, not putting the membrane down and tiling a deck. And we ended up with this mess on a two-year-old home, right? I said, you have to bust into the other decks and look at them. And like, why? And I said, because that, that dishonest work, um, it, it's not a one-time thing. And sure enough, in the second deck we checked, there was a black mold and rotted lumber to the tune of filling a 40 yard dumpster. And you, you, so you, at some point you can just count on, it's a, it's a form of trust. The character, the guy's character was revealed in the first deck. What do you think you, he said? He does good work on the other decks? Come on. Do you, do you think um, uh, just, to dig into the word you used, um, I, I don't know if you said dishonest or, but do you think it's just negligence, ignorance, or you think it's uh, uh, dishonest in the sense that to save money? It's probably some wonderful stew, a booyah base of all that shit. Mm. So I had a skateboard, very similar issue. I had a skateboard ramp. They said it would last three years. They said after three years, if you don't cover it, uh, it will rot. Um, so after three years it did rot, but the top layer, that masonite layer, the stuff they call skate light, that's like $600 a sheet for a four by eight yeah. sheet. Yeah. Um, it was fine. So my neighbor, who's a contractor comes over, he pulls up all the skate light and underneath it, all the plywood was completely rotted and the cross beams were rotted. So he, him and his two, two sons completely rebuild the ramp and on the piece of plywood, they paint it with this stuff that's pink. And they, the guy basically tells me, hey, they should have done this the first time. Basically, this stuff I'm putting on your wood, you could make a, a shower pan out of now. Oh, shit. And then he put down the skate light. He's like, it's better than new. So it's it's kind of it's kind of the same thing. But I don't think the first uh, – I don't think the skateboard manufacturers told – I mean, I don't think the people we bought – because you buy the ramp and it comes on a pallet, right? You pay, pay five or seven grand. I forget what it is. And the entire ramp shows up on a pallet with pre-drilled holes. That, that none of them line up right and um and you put it together we had we had oc ramps come out and there's a little plug for them they were awesome yeah they they manufacture and assembled your ramp i bought mine from keen it was a great ramp but um but i didn't have them assemble it i had the, like a family the friend. fairness where you live like at my house in santa cruz yeah my my teak rots to nothing um we had a we had a table that we'd picked up in Los Gatos of some kind of hardwood. I remember it was, the table. It, it was an outdoor table. It was meant we bought it at a patio store, right? And every year we'd have to have people from the boatyard refinish it every year. And finally the wind picked it up and dashed it to worthless. Oh, I never heard that story. Wow. Yeah, yeah the wind took that thing, wrapped that it around an oak tree a hundred yards away. That table wasn't cheap. No, but the expense of that table was the near annual refinishing. Because they had to take all those slots out and sand them. And it, so, it, yeah, of course it rotted. You can't really do wood there. Right. Because, I mean, because we sit in a marine layer for five hours every day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was the same. Um, there was a while here where I was growing marijuana in the backyard years ago. And... Uh, you could never get it to harvest because they get into these big, they get into these big yep, colas and then there's no air between the the flowers that are getting so tight and then the whole you, literally one day it's beautiful and the next day it's just completely rotted toast i bet you that happens to a lot of fruit here a lot of plants here yeah but there's there's places where you can grow anything too you know yeah another 100 yards up the road from me or another hunt you, you know what i mean yeah, uh, probably we'll at the top of, top of your hill, you probably can grow more too significantly. I have paddle cactus and redwoods on the on my little chunk. God, and that's the best thing about California. You can grow pretty much anything anywhere. 
Uh, Jedediah Snelson will be on Pedro's game show today. Everyone tune in. I think that's at 12 o'clock Pacific Standard Time. A regular on the Sevon podcast. Jedediah, I hope you represent. So the Boeing thing, I guess Al Jazeera made a documentary after reading those two articles you sent me. I guess Al Jazeera made a documentary in uh, 2011. They were ahead of their time. The comments on this uh, documentary are amazing. Everyone's like, hey, this is the most important documentary anyone could ever watch. Wow, 6,700 comments. Wow. Uh, this the documentary never gets old. Here we are 10 years later. This is one of the most important documentaries of all time. Back here again due to Boeing, Boeing whistleblower. So the guy died. The whistleblower killed himself. Died. Was it like six days before the trial? Yeah, and then he told his sister or somebody close to him, was like, hey, if I, if I died, it's not because I killed myself. So. Man, oh, man. Hey, they, they in that article you sent me, I'm sure you remember, Greg, there was a, a portion in there where they, I guess they had an area of the warehouse where they put parts that um, were uh, yeah, defective. Mouth. Yes, defective, defective parts. And not only were they never logged in, but the parts went missing and the people presumed that they were installed in the planes. Yes. Oh, my God. Uh, they said uh, one of the other things that just s steps out is there were pl the average plane in the air had 20,000 issues with it that needed um, addressing. 20,000 per plane. That's an They're insane number. What? They're just minor issues, you know. It's still a flyable aircraft, you know. You can put 200 people on there and fly them to San Francisco from Miami. It's all good. Mark Andreessen had a quote. I think he was the founder of Netscape. Is that right? What's the guy's name? Mark Andreessen. Okay. Big tech name from, from early days. And uh, he's a Twitter. He said, without commenting on this specific piece, and that was the one that we're talking to, we're referring to here. He says, uh, former Boeing CEO Jim McNerney's background, Yale, HBS, Harvard Business School, P&G, McKinsey, GE, all five teach practice that people are fungible across any kind of business. And, and this is that uh, this uh, throng of MBAs that, that downgraded the significance of engineers and engineering in management. And it's, it's a big money saving effort. And the stock price did what? It catapulted. And planes fell out of the sky. It's fucking perfect. There was a Reddit thread that Mulvaney had shown me years ago. Do you remember this? I do. I just remember because you and I were talking about it a, a little while ago. Yeah. Software engineer was explaining the changes there. And it was amazing. I mean, you, you, it, this, you, this is the kind of thing you couldn't keep a secret for long. And here we are. Here we are. It's it predicted. Fuck it. People were shouting about this. Shouting about it. The the article said that um, they they used to build everything in house, and then with this new management that you're referencing, they started um, outsourcing the building of the parts to companies that didn't have engineering departments. They subbed it. They subbed it to people who then. Uh, unknowing to them subbed it again and subbed it again and then went bankrupt and then they'd have to buy everything that was involved and and <laughs> i don't know, sub it out again who knows An another thing they said is is uh, as these changes occurred the average um duration it took to get through a project increased by 50 times 50. i kept i kept uh, uh mbas at an extraordinary arm's length had no interest in them. In fact, we should talk with, uh, with, uh, oh, come on. The name will come to me, but, uh, I just had no need for him. I didn't need an exercise physiologist. I've never had need for a nutritionist. There was, we employed none, listened to none. Um, uh, an exercise 
physiologist. Had had some friends that were exercise physiologists, but there was there was no place for them in the business. And the same with an MBA. Um, I, I don't want to mischaracter. And I would expect, and I would expect being the just kind of traditional business. I would expect MBAs, exercise physiologists, and a nutritionist to nest in the corporate structure and fuck up the business. That would be my expectation. I didn't keep them away out of some personal thing. You kept them out because? They had nothing to fucking offer. Nothing. Right, right. Nothing, nothing to offer. Factory of bad ideas. Young young people with no experience, full of bad ideas. They went to. They got a master's degree in bad fucking ideas. And uh, another, I don't want to mischaracterize it. Remember those those sweet kids at HBS, and those were smart kids. That's some amazing talent in there. Who, uh, which HB? What's HBS? The Harvard Business School kids. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Remember how we, that how fucked up their thinking would be when we'd start. In the beginning, yeah, yep. I'd have to battle, and then at the end we'd vote, and there was a pretty good. We had a we had a dramatic shift in the attitude in the space of several hours of hashing shit out with them. But you could you could feel that being a factory for this shitty thinking. You would tell we, we didn't do uh, marketing. You're in the media department. You had this one message that you repeated over and over and over and feel free to, to fix it. But basically anything we made was not to be thought of selling things. It was to be giving things. So like if we made a video, someone should learn something from it. And you wouldn't even let us uh, we would post an article about something someone learned in level one. You know, someone lost 100 pounds and. They look, there would be a piece in there about some squat therapy tool that they learned and some cues. And then we would want to put a link on the page that said, if you'd like to go to a level one, click here. And you're like, no. And we're like, but Greg, but people would, might want to go now that we've said this. And you're like, no. If they want to go, they'll find it. All we do is we just give shit away. We just add value. Our media should only add value. We didn't do, we didn't do like Facebook buys or Instagram buys or we didn't do... We we gave away we gave away millions of dollars of subscription media by just pulling off the paywall and, and let the world have at it. And the reason for that is I was asking what sits behind the paywall, the good shit. And so let the stuff you get to see for free is the crap. Or are we gonna put let the world see our best and then and then sell shit? I mean, I could never it never felt right. And it, it wouldn't now. I still I still don't have any fondness for a model like that my the model i like is is give something life altering give it away and then and then let people pay for a for a more in-depth kind of experience i mean used to launch the level one saying there's nothing there's nothing you're going to learn this weekend and then there was an except for but there's nothing you're going to learn this weekend a reasonably bright 10 year old couldn't have pulled off our, our website this morning I think it was 12. But except except that you squat shitty. <laughs> That's not on my website. And it worked. It was about billions of dollars. I mean, hundreds and hundreds of millions. Yeah, j just be honest. Hey, and you even had on the original website, hey, don't contact us. Everything you need is here. Please do not contact us. Um, Do you remember that? I, it was it was more aggressive than that, actually. I hear that the the that uh, Nicole made reference to uh, uh, Nicole Carroll, a, a lab my lavish lifestyle, and what's funny is that what I took from the company was was a fraction of what any owner would take or would have would have recommended be taken hundreds of millions of dollars um, was spent uh, discretionarily out of which my take was, 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 was <laughs> insignificant, insignificant to the operation. 
She said that recently? Yeah. Yep. Well, she must really hate private equity. I wonder what she says about them. Let's say let's say let's say that is true. Just for a second. Play along with me. Let's say you were taking just shitloads of money. No, you know, here look, I sit here, I sit here wishing I'd taken more. Do you understand that? I know you said that. You, to me. you said you that to me what? yesterday or a couple but last week. You're like, fuck, more, I should have taken I, more money. I had taken the smooth billion off the fucking top over a decade. You know, if if I'd if I'd if I'd skimmed more, I could it would have sold for a lot more. Cause the people looked at the books and they thought this shit like the games was necessary. There's got to be some reason you're spending 25 million to get 20 back. That must be the whole what makes it go. Let me Try, just say, you know, it's funny though. Right. Try to sell the games, no one would have it. Nobody, right. nobody, nobody. They're like, oh, we like this training thing in the affiliate part. That's pretty cool. I mean, yeah, that's the that is the cool part. Because that's what makes the money, right? Yeah, yeah. You that no one's you have to be stupid to to believe what most CrossFitters think that the games are. Did, did you ever sell more L ones during the games period no. than any other time of the year? It didn't matter. It was, it was actually the worst time of the year. It was all hands on deck. We did less of everything. Yeah. Oh wow. <laughs> it was like it was like you put like I said. I use the example, like, imagine you've got a successful Ford dealership and the cars are rolling off the lot and someone says, hey, you'd be neat to have a clown here and some cotton candy for when people bring their kids, right? And then you come back a year later and there's 400 clowns and they're fucking, you're, they've made salesmen that are now making cotton candy and the, and the cars aren't selling. No, the dealership's closed. It's the clown day. Not making any cars. It's just a clown. We closed the we would close the dealership for two weeks for clown and cotton candy week. It looked it looked on the books like business cancer. It was consuming an ever increasing amount of of every resource you could metric, right? Mm -hmm. And and it a it a it a negligible profit or cost i mean we you know it came came a bunch of close to break even kind of shit but you put the money up front and it, and it would come back over the, over a period of time and so you really couldn't close out the books till six months later to figure out what the total carnage and cost was and then there were immeasurables like what do you mean all the affiliate gals are are in madison and are going to be there for two weeks right you, you it was a trip it was a trip but anything that anything that grows at a greater rate, see the company was growing nicely, but the games was growing even faster, <laughs> and 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 breaking even and breaking even, and that's a drag on a business. It's a tumor. It's a fucking tumor on a company. Well, the and also to say this, the company was growing because of demand. The games was not growing because of demand. It was. It was just being grown. Yeah. Like people weren't banging on the doors more, bigger, more, bigger, more, bigger. It was just. People Greg, were pushing it along kind of thing. Greg, I, this pains me to say this because I fancy myself as the hardest worker alive. But there, it, you were the hardest worker and the biggest contributor to CrossFit with no second place. And you were taking a commensurate um, uh, paycheck. Now people are now there's a ton of people at the company, just like at Boeing, who are taking money, who have no involvement. The people who are in your position, who are taking the largest portion of the paycheck are not contributing anything. They're, they're, they have a portfolio of companies. And so it's crazy to mention anything about your pay without your 24-7, 365 involvement in the company. There was never... There was never Christmas for you or your birthday, I, or you were never taking a day. I never saw you take a day off in, in 20 years. It was, was your fucking life. The, the taking, cost was your life. I was taking a, a shrinking percentage of a rapidly growing pie, and the model was least rents, and we presented it at Harvard. And the books, it, it, you know, you could bear it out with the numbers. I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't that complicated. A shrinking percentage of a rapidly expanding pie. Um, I used to, you know, in the fuck, dude, there was a time where I took 
I took 100% of what the company made. <laughs> right? Yeah. You know, yeah. the year you make 75,000, fucking Uncle Sam. Was, I remember playing with fucking TurboTax until I could get an outcome that was equivalent to what I had that I could give. You, the play by the rules on a on a small business tax is creates a, a near impossible barrier to getting off the ground. Yeah, that's a really good point. There was a time in the company when you took the entire uh, uh, booty home. All of you, it. All of you, it you rode your bike and you brought the coffee can home to, from from the office. <laughs> right. right. Lauren's first job was taking the checks that were in my desk drawer and getting them over to the bank. Heidi Kroom, uh, here's my subscription money for the premium Sevy content. Thank you. Sevon, please send the premium private content to my DMs. Yeah, we have so much of it pouring out. <laughs> Thank you the for your brand loy loyalty payment. Well, um, I'm so glad to be done with that. But aren't you glad you did it? Oh, yeah. I got no, I got, I got no regrets. I should have taken more money out. Yeah. Not that I need any, but in hindsight, I, I was, I was, I worked for that fucking company, you know, mm -hmm. I lived for it and it was, it was, it was providing everything I had. I mean, it was feeding my family and all my friends' families. I my had dad, this my sister, everyone worked, for, worked for us. It was a, that was a, that was a low. You know my friend with the Pringle can? Yeah, yeah. Um, so he he had this girlfriend who always wanted him to do this crazy shit to him, and he never wanted to do it to her. And then she broke up, and he regretted not doing that crazy shit to her that she <laughs> always wanted. And it kind of reminds me of when you say, damn, I should have taken more money. I should have paid myself more. The one that got away. Ironically, she dumped him because he didn't make enough money. Sad. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. I, 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 um, I, I wonder what the, I wonder what the context. Oh, that uh, that there's uh, some higher aim. Like it now than to, there was before. It used to be that everyone worked to uh, to support me. And now there's now there's a greater purpose. Oh shit! Something, oh, something, shit. something like that. Oh god! Oh god! Uh, vindicate uh, to help down and out former company owner. Keep your head up, Greg. Someday you'll make it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What's crazy is hey, check um, this out. I was thinking about you know in the broken science sense is this makes Emily laugh because I think it, it's been obvious to her but imagine a, a, a broad general inclusive curriculum the one whose specialty wasn't specializing that would prepare this student for the unknown and the unknowable can you imagine such a thing i'm starting to go on <laughs> yeah i know we're just all it's, it, it, everyone laughs at me you know like i was last to see it but yeah that's what we're doing would it, it would have some math yeah, uh, we we bridge uh, qualitative and quantitative reasoning eventually at uh, probability theory as logic and where inf information theory and maximum entropy and all that kind of stuff sits. But th the work has been done. There's been a bridge of uh, of uh, uh, the qualitative and the quantitative in 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 probability theory. Cox theorem, something to look up. Wikipedia article on it might even Spell? push some. Uh, Cox? yes cox's theorem this uh cox's theorem named after the physicist richard threckeld cox is a derivation of the laws of probability theory from a certain set of postulates the derivation justifies the so-called logical interpretation of probability as the laws of probability derived by cox's theorem are applicable to any proposition logical Pro to any proposition logical probability is a bayesian probability other forms of bayesian such as the subjective interpretation are given other justifications no idea what i read 
Yeah, it's uh, this is this is at the heart of of uh, uh, probability theory is um, as, as uh, developed and, and summarized by Jaynes, E.T. Jaynes, and he's the maximum entropy guy. But anyways, this material and this work is this space is a is a bridging of qualitative and quantitative reasoning. And it's a it's a significant maximum entropy is a significant contribution to information theory. And what's cool is that what this implies for a curriculum is that and James was maybe one of the first to realize that uh, probability theory as used by Laplace and Jeffries, um, that it's uh, an extension of uh, Aristotelian logic where uh, deductive logic um, uh, precipitates in the special case where our hypotheses are ones and zeros. It's a, it's a, wonderful, it's a wonderful technical treatise but more importantly, the implications and applications have been enormously fruitful in a whole bunch of areas. And, uh, you know, we had one of the maximum entropy gurus out at the broken science thing here in, in Scottsdale in uh, Anton Garrett. And in fact, he's one of the contributors to a, a, a book that people in this field all um, hold and play with and look at six contributors but he's a and what's the book uh maximum entropy in action i think weird title it's it's dorky stuff is but his is his talk from the bsi event that just happened in uh, arizona is that going to be published on the bsi website uh, yeah it sure should be That's yeah why we shot it yeah he's he's actually made some significant contributions to cox theorem uh and added some uh, some, uh, uh, there we go. Anton Garrett is one of the chapters in there. Is that readable? Oh man. I appreciate you taking a deep breath there and not just saying, of course it is you idiot. I yeah. appreciate you. Uh, uh, give me a little uh, breathing room with that question. <laughs> no, no, it's not. <laughs> <easy>. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Okay. Good to know. So wait for the talk to come out on the BSI here's site. What, here's what's here's what's cool. You can you can you can get an understanding and the and the applications like like plausibility. I, I'll come back to, um, but the proof is in the pudding in what people are doing with this. For instance, the focusing of pictures that were taken out of focus. Oh. Oh, wow. So, yeah. And so there, there's a, there's a, the, the fruits of maximum entropy are, are, are wonderful. Um, detailed and it's AI. So like the That's, algorithm shit that like Photoshop uses to fix shit. Yeah. Th there's a, I don't want to, I don't want to speak to the applications, but okay. uh, but uh, they're, they've been wonderfully fruitful. Um, I've asked a Anton several times to talk to me about the different maximum entropy conferences and who was there and what they were doing and the kinds of success. And some of it has been really cool, like taking old data from radio telescopes and made what were, where they thought there was nothing of value, found uh, far deep sky objects in, with crazy detail magnitudes greater resolution on old data that's pretty cool wow. right yeah i'm like guessing those companies to... those companies don't have dei departments i'm guessing this is a uh, it's the newest and best work in computing leans heavily on probability theory as as, as logic and uh Jane's book, he says probability, it's entitled Probability Theory, uh, The Logic of Science, and it is. It's, it's aptly named. It's a brilliant work. The cats over at Less Wrong have a deep respect for Jane's, and it's worth reading. Uh, the Level Above Mine by Yudkowsky.
I'm looking at less wrong what that is. Oh, the uh, uh, community blog devoted to the ref uh, refining the art of rationality. Yeah, the Yudkowsky and uh, Pearl um, are there. And Pearl got like the equivalent of the kind of the Nobel Prize, right? The Turing Prize for computing. He's a UCLA uh, philosopher and uh, and uh, computer science genius. That's that's Daniel Pearl's dad and this, this uh, polymath, unusual character, Yudkowsky, the level above mine. It, it read rough for me. It, it maybe left a little bad taste in my mouth and the comments were intriguing and I read it again. Each time I read it, I have a little more sympathy and understanding, but it's a, it's funny and it's a, it's a powerful read and these, these guys are smart as shit. I mean, it's crazy. But uh, one of the discussions, the, it's a, it's a one or two page you printed out article and then I think it's 40 or 50 pages of comments. But the subject ultimately started about James. And what he's saying is that there was a formidability and a strength and power to what he'd done and seen that they, he hasn't seen before. And I agree. I think that James is one of the most important physicists of a, clearly of my lifetime. And I, I have him on a par with like an Einstein. Uh, it, but the field, it's, it's, uh, it's in the information theory space. It's in the philosophy of science. And it's a contribution that only a physicist could make. Look at these guys. These guys that put this stuff together um, are all hard science types. And what they did was fix some gaping, disastrous errors in the academic concept of science. David Stove is part of that. And so you've got these guys like me that are uh, like uh, like Briggs, like Jim Franklin, that are huge fans of Stove and of James. When you say holes, can you tell us what any of those are like that we would understand? Yeah, I mean, the the <laughs> my journey with this, my outreach began by sending just a simple sentence via email um, that when science re uh, replaces uh, uh, predictive strength with consensus is a determinant of a model's validity. Science becomes nonsense, mm. and that was the that was a big fish head on a hook. I mean, I caught I caught the smartest people, people that I thought were the smartest on earth, because I would learn what little I knew from them. Right. So I led with that, and then others showed up. Like when David Hastings walked into this this thing and look up, look who that guy is. He's a legendary physicist, an important man. 95 year old physicist found his way to my house from stuff he'd seen on the on and knew that anton was going to be here that was the guy that uh showed up at 8 45 and had breakfast right yeah maggie took him in and took care of him <laughs> thing Dude. is 10 he showed up at 8 30 without a ride 95 years old hungry so she made him breakfast but i gotta guy, tell and you look him up. I mean, look, look, he's got a Wikipedia page. It's a it's a it's a tough chew just reading what he did. I got to tell you uh, this story. Maybe Greg will want to tell it better than me. But there was a guy at the event who his job was he was in, he's in charge of uh, moving nuclear materials or very high, uh, very dangerous objects around the United States of America. Very, very the most dangerous assets that we have moving them around the United States. He was, of America. That was, he, was, he was he was tasked with safeguarding the transportation of the nation's most sensitive physical asset. OK, yes. And I'm not supposed to say what those are anyway. And so he was at the event and the event was uh, over and people were supposed to go home and come back a couple hours later. And um, this 95 year old guy was uh, sitting there and, and he wouldn't leave. He's just hanging out. This physicist. So um, someone's like, hey, uh, uh, will you ask him to leave? So this guy's like one of the toughest human beings. You just look at him and he's one of the toughest. Human, you know, he's one of the toughest human beings you've ever seen in your life. And he walks over to him and uh, and, and, he, and he talks to him. And uh, I don't remember who he came back to. He's like, nah. And we're like, what? He's like, I'm not telling that dude to leave. <laughs> <laughs> we're like what's up that's what, you, what do you mean you're not telling him to leave it's over he's like nah I'm, you go tell the 95 year old physicist to leave I, that's that's like that's above my pay grade <laughs> oh that was so good so he just stayed the party was over and he stayed until the next party started yeah you're doing something right when a guy like that crashes your party 
Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. In fact, he wants to see footage from Sunday. He couldn't come back. Well, we got oh, it. Man. That's why he wanted to stay, I bet. It's like, God, soak it all up. He just, Hey, that guy would have stayed the night. You should have just put him in one of the rooms. Yeah, I was caught off guard. You know, there was a lot going on, a lot of moving pieces, but it, what a delight. Haley walked up to him and was like, uh, sir, we have a van here for you. It'll take you back to your house and uh, and bring you back when the when the five o'clock event starts. He's like, no, no, I'm good. I'll stay. <laughs> it's just like, <laughs> like it was 90, I'm going to do that shit when I'm 95, too. Now I'm good. His, uh, his father started uh, UCLA math department when it opened. Crazy. Wow. Yeah, big, big family. And uh, a uh, E.T. James fan. Um, uh, Greg, uh, this is going back to what we were talking about before. If you if you hired a replacement who's on that list uh, before you uh, this is to run CrossFit before you answer that. I remember in the early days you would say, shit, I can't even give this thing to my kids. This thing is too like valuable. Like this thing can't go down. The message here is so valuable. I don't know how we're going to protect it. <laughs> Cure for the world's most vexing problem. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's it. something that creates this much health and wealth should never be sold. Did, did you Did you ever, was there ever like in your mind, like even now, just sitting here now, are you like, nope? I don't think that there is a replacement for you. I've told you that many times. I don't say that to be a, a sycophant. I just, it's your, it's your, it's your creation. I didn't, I didn't run it the way that you would run a business. You don't think anybody else would do that either, huh? No, I know they would take the money that I wish I'd taken. Nicole. <laughs> it was, it was really hard to, um, in, in defense of those people, I was around you all the time and I heard the message and it was still really hard. Like, I still wanted to sell CrossFit visors. And Greg's like, no. I'm like, but I want one. He's like, no. Yeah, it was, it was, it was, um, you kept your, you kept your eye on the prize. The health of the affiliates, um, provided everyone's opportunity, their strength. In other words, applying their trade on the people in their community and and the impact it had on their lives was was business was income and and purpose like like a thousand you know thousands of fires around the world so you go to a go to a gym in 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 kenya and it's the, the same shit's going on it's the same cool people with different colored skin speaking a different language it didn't matter it was cool. It was cool. The uh, reception we got in China it, with the affiliates there was spectacular. And and that's that was the business. That was the business. And what what would tease every single fucking MBA on earth is the opportunity at that many points of presence to migrate them to points of sale and to start looking at your own kids as as uh customers that link that you have that um every yeah, affiliate I could discuss, the whole thing could also be just called the professionalization of the training space right and you did call it that because what come i do and did and it was because what comes next like say selling them uh uh, uh, training, prescription, workouts, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I don't, I'm, I've lost interest in the profession at that point. I can imagine similar behavior coming out of a physician or a lawyer, me saying, no, thanks. If my doctor had to always ask some other doctor about my case, I'd be wanting to get to the other doctor. <laughs> no? Yeah. Yes. Yes. For sure. 
Yes. A friend of mine went to the doctor the other day. They went to Stanford. I would have done that. And it's a, a, I guess it's a teaching hospital. Yeah. And they said to me, hey, dude, it's not cool what you've done to me. I'm like, what do you mean? Well, the doctor came in and it was with a black woman, a black woman doctor. And I'm like, yeah. And I said, and the first thing I thought was, oh, is this a DEI hire? And I said, you don't need to think if it's a DEI hire. It, that it, it, it's, it's a hun- like they're completely open about it. It is 100% a DEI hire. Like it has nothing. They've already told us they're hiring people based on their, based on their sex, their sexual preference and the color of their skin. <clears throat> and my friend said, but what if the doctor's good? And I said, what if they are good? We will never know now because you know they're a DEI hire. I was actually, this led to another conversation, Greg. This woman that they've appointed to the Supreme Court, think about someone like Jackie Robinson, right? He earned everything he got. He earned it all. He fucking earned it all. And now they appoint a black woman to the Supreme Court. And I don't see her as a as a as the first black woman Supreme Court justice any more than I see a lion in a cage as uh, a lion at the zoo as being a real lion. Like, like they've completely undermined the whole. Where's the aspiration for someone like it, it is it is really cool to earn something based on your own merit. All that aspiration is just fucking out the door. They're just they, it's like they're just burning the aspiration equity out the door by doing that. Double down on being a woman, double down on being Native American or whatever the DEI flavor of the month is and you're fucking in. It, it, well, I started thinking about that, how sad that is that that was given to that lady and taken right. away from all those little girls out there. <laughs> the End of Race Politics, Coleman Hughes. Good book? Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> I got to, uh, Russell Berger turned me on to it. That's the second book in a month he's turned you on to. What was right? the other one? That was the parenting one. Yes. Hey, this is how cool it is to be friends with Greg, by the way. Uh, Russell Berger turned him on to a book, and then a week later I walk into Greg's house, and there's a stack of the books at the table of that book for people to take as they come, as they visit him. Hey, grab one of those. Yep. I, um, knew, I knew of Coleman Hughes from uh, National Review. And you can read a book like this in in an hour. It's uh, there's so little that you really have. To, it, it, it's it's uh, there's not a lot you have to think about. There's something wrong with you if it doesn't just. Of course. Oh, he's young. Uh, Coleman Hughes uh, is an American writer and podcast host. He was the fellow at the Manhattan Institute of Policy Research and a fellow and contributing editor at the City Journal, and he's the uh, host of the podcast Conversations with Coleman. Grew up in Montclair, New Jersey. Nice town. On June uh, 19, 2019, Hughes testified before U.S. House Judiciary Committee, Subcommittee at a hearing on reparations for slavery, arguing against the campaign. He argued that if we were to pay reparations today, we would only divide the country further, making it harder to build the political coalitions required to solve the problems facing black people today. In this vein, he highlighted mass incarceration and high homicide victimization rates as problems affecting black Americans today. He suggested an alternative proposal by paying reparations to black Americans who personally grew up under Jim Crow. He's got a TED talk. Damn, he's young. That, that, uh, born 1996, 28 years old. That's always cool to see, uh, he was on Forbes. He was on the 30 under 30 list of Forbes, too. I saw it now that I recognize his face. He was on CNN. He destroyed the uh, host. Classic. Yeah. I wonder if I can find that. That's cool. I fell into the P. Diddy uh, vortex. Oh, really? Yeah. What'd you find? Um, uh, here, first, I'm going to play this here real quick. Let me play this here real quick. Uh, look at this. 
this is Coleman Hughes, uh, the author of that book Greg just showed us on uh, CNN. Let me know if you guys can hear this. I don't think there was anything about this that had to do with the fact that she was a black woman. If you or I did this, or even any white scholar, it would be career ending to have 50 examples of plagiarism. And it has to be because how can you be the one upholding Harvard's integrity when you yourself have failed? What's your view on whether or not this idea that uh, the race of the person accused is not important here? So I, I think it's definitely uh, a point here that really um, we have to look at. Why is it that it took seven weeks to decide that this was too much, whereas the president of Stanford got seven months for, the, for similar allegations? Plagiarism, it's not like, a, it's, it's not like true crime where there's, there's a million perspectives on it. You kind of well, either I, lifted the paragraph say... or you didn't. It's just great work right there. By <laughs> You either lifted the paragraph or you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> You know, it's like that for me. It was funny. The uh, Western blot uh, 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 misconduct in the Alzheimer's research. They hire they hire a guy, and he looks like he goes. He has he he claims that he hasn't proven um, scientific misconduct, but the paper needs to be retracted, and there's evidence perhaps for the misconduct. And so I look at it, and what it was was they'd taken a Western blot from an old study and stretched the x-axis, shrunk the y-axis, and colored it yellow. <laughs> but it had some of the same uh, photographic artifacts, you know, lint and shit from the, from the original. And it was busted by machine. Fucking computer caught the fraud, okay? A bot designed to chase down images and compare them. And found, look, here's one that's been stretched and shrunk and colored. And it's the same picture. That's no fucking accident. Right. <laughs> Printer malfunction. That's that's the security camera watching you drag the body out and throw it in the back of your truck. That's what that is. Uh, Matt Burns, don't bore Greg with the P. Diddy garbage. Listen, listen. You have to understand this is it's Greg, Greg Greg Glassman is a renaissance man. The last show here he was schooling us on the guy who shot fucking Tupac. That's true. That's <laughs> yeah. true. Yeah. Like he lined what, up back was the line. What what? He lined him up. Oh, right. <clears throat> um the the most the most concerning thing that I saw while going into the P Diddy research into the and I basically did all my research on YouTube was I noticed that these videos that I was watching that were 10 to 20 minutes long appeared to be made by AI because the pronunciation of all the names was wrong and so I started getting this impression that there is a program out there that you can just type in a story like you could put in an essay that's like you know that takes 15 minutes to read the AI will read it and then put images to it and tell any story you want. I started getting that impression. I'm like, uh-oh. Hey, because they already have that for short clips, you know. So why not have it for 20-minute pieces? You know about the uh, journal articles that have that have <clears throat> been exposed or uh, suspected of being AI written, and there's now tests, there's script that you can run to look for AI. Yeah. And there's people that... Uh, Professors have called out students. I know this was written by AI. Have you, oh, have yeah. you mentioned any of that? Have no, you, no, no. But I've seen that. I've seen that. Maybe you brought it up a few shows ago. It's 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 fun because I can I can do it too. And one guy was saying on a paper that it didn't say anything. And it doesn't. It no, it has that distinctive feature of of going nowhere. It's it's what AI can do, AI can mimic uh, very bad writing. This is the app you can use to see if something's AI it, called transparent.ai. It, it approximates it approximates a lot of the shit I read at the New York Times. Really? Have you have you noticed an increasing tendency to to delay the point of the fucking article. Oh yes. So it much is. background. It's like, I gee, whiz, chick. When am I? When are you going to get to the fucking story? 
it's like reading a recipe. They like they tell you about how they developed the recipe and how their mom came up with this shit, and then the recipe itself's at the way bottom, and then how to do the, all the ingredients right even further. Yeah. Yeah, and, and at the end, we, we find out we're we're supposed to make a key lime pie, and I don't want one. You know. <laughs> right. Yeah. I want a pecan pie. Justin H. There's also an AI that can take the AI out of it. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Pat, Pat, what I'm saying is, is like, so right now I can, I can take this, I can take this show and I can put it into this software called Opus and it will break this show into 50 clips. And then there's little sliders I can slide and I can slide the sliders. So that will put, start putting in pictures. So if Greg says, yeah, so I rescued a woman from a burning building, then it would show flames go across the stream, uh, uh, screen and it'll put in the audio of a fire truck and then, um, and then it'll take some uh, some images and show Gre and show Greg, right? And it, it it automates the whole thing. And so what I'm saying is, is how easy would it be to publicly destroy someone to write 50 essays talking about how Caleb um, is uh, um, has a meth lab under the Shattuckin and tell write 50 different essays on it, put it in the software, and it's like pulling up all the uh, the images and then assembling it with one second cuts and keeps everyone's attention. I mean, might even be true. The brain so it just sounds like a crazy brainwashing tool. Wow, haven't seen you in a while. He sounds like my father just red inked the whole thing. Hi, Allison. <laughs> uh, Joe, Westing, Greg Sevon, and one deliciously attractive man. Oh, that's you, Caleb. Oh, thanks, Joe. I just took the uh, the CPAT, the fitness test for the fire department that he's on. Yeah. Really. Yeah, yeah, he's a he just got onto the fire department in my local in my town. Yeah, and uh, my wife and I just took the test yesterday as well. So Congratulations! Behind him. Thanks. And, but what's the test do? So I'm not fault tracking. It's a fitness test. It's just like a like we did a written test and then we did a fitness test. Why? Get on the fire department. Oh, please. Are you going to be a uh, volunteer firefighter? Professional. Hey, hey, no volunteer here. here. Wait, you're you're gonna you're thinking about becoming a firefighter, Caleb? Yeah. God, I hate that. <laughs> Slow to it. Okay, this is a Greg Glassman AI. The well, let's see if Greg uh, if the word if he knows that the words are actually his. I think Greg went to the bathroom. Yeah, it might have. Yeah. Just listen. Fear. A uh, damn Savon, where have you been? Why has Caleb been talking about uh, going to the fire department? I th that would cause me serious distress. I probably have to block that out. <laughs> no, I've I've never said it. I've never said anything about it. Okay, yeah, Mason, you douche canoe. It's okay. He doesn't he doesn't look at my Instagram either. So why? Oh, is it has it been on your uh, Instagram? No, I just very I just put a picture of our test. My my wife actually beat me in the test, so. If anybody has any questions about how fit my wife is and how she just beats the shit out of me all the time, that's part of it. She smoked me on the test. Did she just, since she's already a firefighter, did she do it just for uh, moral support? No, she's, so she has to get on to another department too. And that's part of the whole, pro they like make the whole process, make you do the whole process again. So, uh, Bill Grundler, hi coach. Long time. Hey, Bill. Um, we okay. Should, we should go see Bill. Yeah, let's do that. Inferno, San Luis Obispo. Let, let's go to San Luis Obispo, but pretend like we're visiting Bill. I, I know a good place to stay there. Yeah. Great. I know a good place to get a hamburger. Um, so, Greg, this is your voice in AI uh, with your actual – Andrew Hiller put this up yesterday. This is your AI, he, uh, This is your writing, but not – well, your fake voice. Here we go. Me? Absolutely. Your needs in the Olympic athletes – Differ by degree, not kind. Increased power, strength, cardiovascular, and respiratory endurance, flexibility, stamina, agility, balance, and coordination are each important to the world's best athletes and to our grandparents. The amazing truth is that the very same methods that elicit optimal response in the Olympic or professional athlete will optimize the same response in the elderly. Of course, we can't load your grandmother with the same squatting weight that we'd assign an Olympic skier but they both need to squat. In fact, squatting is essential to maintaining functional independence and improving fitness. Squatting is just one example of a movement that is universally valuable and essential. It rarely taught to any, but 
most advanced athletes. This is a tragedy. Through painstakingly thorough coaching and incremental dose, CrossFit has been able to teach anyone who can care for themselves to perform safely and with maximum efforts. The same movements typically utilized by professional coaches in elite and certainly exclusive environments. Is CrossFit for me? Absolutely. Uh, c- cool, right? Yeah. Does that sound hey, like me? Uh, c- c- it, it's it's, it's weird. It sounds like it, um, maybe if you had taken too much melatonin or something. He, I the think first time have, I heard it, I didn't hear you, but now I always hear you when I hear it. I think we have, we might have better AI. Allison NYC, that sounds nothing like him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, where did you, where do you remember where you were when you wrote that? No, but, but you I, wrote but that, I, but I do remember, I remember the kind of the seminar version of that. So that could be, that could be might have gotten improved on um, with use but it was the the line is that uh, our the needs of Olympic athletes and our grandparents differ by degree not kind one wants functional um, competence for um, functional dominance or functional capacity for uh, for a uh, competitive dominance and the other wants a uh, uh, functional exercise for uh, maintaining independence something like that did you own a car when you wrote that it's right in that space that's when you were taking all a, the money. I bought That's a when car. you were taking all the money, right? <laughs> I, bought a, I bought a car because um, the cons were putting demands on me that it, I was sp- I was going to spend more in rental than I was uh, uh, in ownership, and so I, I wasn't I wasn't not driving a car because uh, I didn't drive a car because riding a bike in Santa Cruz is is a fucking blast. And you save a ton of money. You know, I mean, it was fun to race the bus, right? You can get anywhere in town faster than the bus will get you there. Did you have a gym when you wrote that? Had you already opened your first the 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 in um what's the name of that court? Experimental court. What was that? Engineer court. Yeah. There was an eighteen month period where the seminars, the journal. And my finally, my own gym happened, and it's all 2000, 2001. And you think this was written around then? So in that space, a lot of the journal was written at the Ugly Mug. Yeah. They have a Ukrainian flag there and a big Black Lives Matter flag and a gay flag there. No. <laughs> they got all the flags. Yeah, it's, uh, Santa Cruz is always that, that way. They've run out of room for flags. I it's crazy. You, I sold, I had soldiers on the wall and a giant American flag. You had so, what? Are, what's that mean? Soldiers on a wall. Because, uh, people were deployed. Were sending me pictures. Oh, oh. You mean you at your first gym? Yeah, they, yeah. Put Dude, the all up. the gyms that that's carried over to today. You can walk into any CrossFit gym now, and it's full of. That that culture you set, that decor you set, is in, it's like I see that. It, I feel like I see that every affiliate I go into now. Every affiliate has every branch's flag up and an American flag next to it. And then a lot of them even have like a Palmia flag, which is like prisoner of war, missing in action flags. A lot, even more so, some of them have a member who was killed in action, and they have a memorial for them. And then they like keep it nice and tidy, and they have like a a plaque and a flag and all of their big old shadow box form. And when you, when you launched, when you launched the affiliate program and um, they had, would have their websites in one of the requirements to be an affiliate is you had to have a link for the CrossFit journal. That was kind of the only requirement besides the website. And to this day, if you click on, if you go to any of the, you know, thousands and thousands, tens of thousands of websites out there, if you click on that journal link, 
it takes you to the very last thing that was published in the journal. And it's like, I think it's a uh, killing the fat man season two or something and something else. D does any part of you think that uh, like for me, I think if I, if I'm the owner of the company, I'm thinking like that's one of my biggest untapped resources, that link right there. And yet the company, you sold the company four years ago and, and they haven't used it. Do you, you think I'm off there? I don't, I don't think they have, uh, uh, any kind of gift for messaging. Mm. In fact, I think there's, I don't think there's any messaging talent in the, in the organization, really. I don't see it. Define messaging for me. Like able to speak to the, to the base or to the masses or to rally the troops or. To, to produce um, compelling, gripping, sincere, valuable, uh information we have a cure for the world's most vexing problem blah blah but blah there's it five buckets of death it, it reminds me of what was warned about in the clue train manifesto on on talking of 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 corporate speak do you know how someone you can tell the difference between someone answering the phone and their message how well, I'm just saying, you know, you, you know, you possess that skill. You oh, right, right, right. Yeah. Cause it's always weird when you miss, it's always weird when you get it wrong. And there's like, people, hello? Kramer, yeah. John Kramer has a pretty, he can do a pretty good job of, of like, hello, you know, like it sounds like <laughs> he, yeah. he can, he can do that yeah. pretty well. Yeah. Um, And we can all watch a video of a, of a, uh, if I show you a video, I can give you three seconds to tell me whether it's it's videotaped or it's actors. Right, right. No one's fooled with the difference between a documentary and a dramatization. It's right. it's abundantly clear to people that have normal cognitive capacity, right? Yeah. It, it's it's the same on on corporate speak. There's no one's living, breathing, feeling. There's nothing important here. There's nothing of value here. This is just, it might as well be, it's, it reminds me of the Andreessen comment of the, of the, uh, you know, it's just got this fungible, you don't even know what the product is. The Clue Train Manifesto, I think does a great job of, of characterizing uh, corporate speak. Look at the things that I like. We got a vomiting clown. You cannot have a vomiting clown. Yeah, we got a puking clown. You can't do that. All right, watch. <laughs> you have to charge. You'll get. You'll sell twice as many seminars if they're nine hundred ninety nine dollars and ninety five cents. And you go, why? Because people don't know it's a thousand. I go, I don't want to try and educate those fucking people. If you don't know that $999.95 is a fucking thousand dollars, you're going to have a hard time with the material at the seminar. Oh, hey, and that's fascinating in the sense that, like, that's foresight into building a community. Like, hey, call the retards at the door. You know, like, I, I, I treated out. everyone like I would want to be treated. I built a seminar right. that I wish I could have gone to. Right. To bad they didn't have this 20 years ago i'd be 20 years further down the road all the shit that no one told you come learn it in the weekend uh pat lang uh greg awesome having you on the t on all the time i hope you didn't buy any truth truth social stock yikes no no uh, there was a funny comment in here. Oh, uh, Greg Glassman. Uh, my gym bag also, or my gym also has a Pepsi flag. <laughs> uh, Justin V, when is uh, Greg's uh, non-compete officially up? I think this year. I think June. Bernie Gannon. Uh, recently in New York City, a city councilwoman had the fire department remove American flags with the red line patriotic firefighter flag. Oh, yeah, the, the cop flag, right? They had him remove the uh, from a fire from the firehouse in its truck. The councilwoman said it was fascist. 
Yeah, that <clears throat> that was a trippy story. Really? I think New York City also uh, proudly uh, celebrates their all-woman um, fire department, which has already gone to a few, uh, I think, calls where they had they weren't able to uh, do what needed to be done. That's rough. Imagine picking. <laughs> hey, I do think, though, a woman could have asked that physicist to leave um, your house better than the big tough I'm guy. I'm glad he didn't get chased off. What'd you say? I'm glad he didn't get chased off. I know. I know. I'm just joking. I know. You were so gracious. I, I, you, I, I walked by an hour later, and he was at your dining room table, and you were sitting down with him. Yeah. You're like, hey, I need some time to prepare. Everyone out. And the next thing I know, you're in the kitchen with the guy for three hours. He's a good dude. Quite a thinker. <clears throat> What's his field? Space geometry? Is that what it was? I think so. Yeah. We just had his Wikipedia page up. But he's a Jane's guy. You know, remember, I, I want to explain how I found Jane's, too. I'd, I had read all of Stowe's stuff over and over and over again, including um, including uh, uh, Hume's inductive skepticism and the rationality of, in, of uh, induction. And boy, those are tough reads. That's a lot, that's a lot of work to, to get through that. But I came away um, convinced that probability theory is where is where science found its grounding, that the logic of science could be found there. And I sat on that for a month or so until it just came to me in a flash that if this is true, then it would have to be the case that some mathematician somewhere has, from, from probability theories, found science. And I ordered all of the big selling wide use uh, uh, texts on probability theory. And one of them was by a fellow named E.T. James, and it was probability theory, the logic of science. I love the title because I think, I think that's what I was looking for. And I picked it up and sure enough, it was exactly as I had, had dreamed it, it would have to be. If science does ground in probability theory, there has to be a mathematician that's seen that. And I, I was only wrong in that it was a, it was a physicist, not a mathematician, but a physicist who's made an immense contribution to uh, applied mathematics and information theory. The, the, Jane's is a tough read, but anyone could do it. It's just going to take a long time. Um, and the, some say the first three chapters are the hardest part. I think they're the most accessible, <laughs> frankly. So, And the commentary is all delightful and, and wonderful. There's stuff in there that any thinker could... Uh, could uh, um, grab, but uh, uh, the reviews, the Amazon reviews on the book are amazing. And many of those reviewing the book on Amazon are themselves amazing physicists, including one particular physicist at Duke that's, uh, that's possibly, uh, I don't, don't want to jinx anybody but the some amazing men and women at, on that in that review and i think it's what it's only got 132 reviews or something like that when you say probability could that be just interchanged every time you say that with a prediction predictive value prediction yeah um we score your prediction on the on the outcome and and it it sits as a probability figure I always liked the example because I had modest training in this application of probability theory. But when I worked at Hughes, I worked on a, in a laboratory that was making target identification uh, software devices. Uh, and uh, as part of the Phoenix missile system. And it was interesting that the idea that probability inheres in our information or in our head rather in, than in an object is really clear to people working in this field. Um, and, and it's not its not basically clear to, to the layman and even to many scientists, but you would get something like, you don't know if this is a flock of seagulls or if it's a, a, 
incoming aircraft and then there's a point where yeah it's it's there's a 90 percent chance it's aircraft and then there's a uh you know 60 percent chance it's uh it's a little cluster of mix and and then it's some distance that becomes a 95 percent chance but no one's thinking that it was birds and then became an airplane and then later a mig um <laughs> this what the data was what the probability was was it was based on the on the information that was available thank you so, so as opposed to it inhering in the object people think people think that the that uh in fact when we give a when we give a probability problem we'll start off like assuming a fair coin or on a fair dice or fair die. And in that single word fair, what you're saying is that you're gonna demand, you're putting on it the physical requirement that it come up one and six. You're saying that that is the limit. You're giving it a, you're giving it a, a, a mathematical uh, uh, depiction of a, of a physical reality. But the truth is, is that the that the physics of it are solid. This is on the subject that both Briggs and Jane's talk about uh, coin flipping machines. And Br Briggs made one at Cornell, and I think it was what eighty percent heads. You know, you could pick the you could pick how it came out. I'm kind of rambling here, but look at the NFL. No, no, it, this is so important that people look get at the NFL time. regulations for flipping a coin. It's really interesting. Oh shit! Is this? Uh, are there coin? Are there coin flipping machines that can flip a coin perfectly the same? Damn near. This is Briggs's coin flipping machine they get it just right head oh that's Briggs's wow good job Caleb head head he calls it even before it lands head <laughs> head oh there's a tail I went down too far if you go just far enough on this, hey, so so Greg, explain to me the implication there, where the where the where the thinking is wrong, because if you well, say with, we, the 50 50 of it is is the no information position, and there's a there's a mathematician is a great trick on the net, and it's, it's 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 a it's it's slightly specious, but the point's still powerful, and so she's got the coin, and she's like so. So what are the, what what are the odds? What's it gonna be? You know, and you go, I don't know. It's fifty fifty. She goes, all right, no, whoosh, get you, and then does one of these, and goes, what do you think? What are my odds? And he goes, well, you've looked at it. She says, that's correct. So what is it? Is it fifty fifty? He's no, it's gonna be a hundred percent. And like, well, okay, well, what's it? It's the same fucking quarter. You're saying that the number changed because of my knowledge? <laughs> I thought the fifty fifty was in the quarter. You know? Wow. Wow. It's what we assign to to a zero information state. It's kind of like standing in the it, like, you know, if you're the blind goalie, where do you stand? Can you point me to the middle? I'm going to stand in the middle and put my arms out wide and legs, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Why hey, there? What's crazy is even that information isn't enough to convince most people. It uh, E.T. James has written brilliantly on this. I'll prepare it for next time. But on uh, on the, the consequences of of not understanding where probability inheres. Laplace did his best to communicate his method. What does that mean? Inheres. And yeah, yeah, that it, it lives. It lives in our minds. It's a, it's a it's a representation of our state of knowledge. But uh, Laplace said that he used probability theory to repair defects in his knowledge, which is just a fucking brilliant thing. 
He also says that it's nothing different than the calculus, and the word might have been translated better as a calculations, uh, common sense turned to calculation. But uh, he was acutely aware of that, and, and mathematicians, some, and some people in the philosophy of science and logic, took Laplace to mean, I think, that, that validation of his method was found in, in, in this probability theory, and it wasn't. It, what he was doing was he was testing um, uh, hunches to make physical predictions match where they should be. And so the Newtonian mechanics had objects not lining up quite like they ought to. And so he postulated some things that could cause this to be off and then, and then played with those numbers until you got good matches. And it was in this manner that he feel, feel, found out that the earth was oblong by some 1% mm. or 3% or something. And on that assumption, these planets were on the X on time. Crazy contributions to uh, celestial physics and mechanics and mathematics through that methodology. And when you realize that, that validation and method are entirely independent, What's important about Laplace's method it was that the it was the insights it led him to, but the validation comes solely through the predictive strength of his models, and he was somewhat unprecedented in that regard. The method by which he came to those was to repair the defects in his knowledge using probability theory. Jeffries did the same thing in the geophysics space and was knighted as a contemporary of Karl Popper's, ironically. What was Jeffries' first name? Do you know? Uh, Sir Harold Jeffries. An extraordinarily important thinker. He's a kind of a you know, one of the one of the greatest of geophysicists for sure, but his contributions to probability theory and what he kept alive that James then ran with is a, will make him forever. James dedicates his book to Jeffries. Did you, th this is a, a sharp. These are people that we're producing biographies on. Jeffries, Stove, James, Laplace, Cox, Shannon. And it has immense ramifications for for what it is that we're teaching our kids in school. For instance, we learn in geometry about modus ponens. If P then Q is premise one, premise two P, therefore Q, and then we're taught about reasoning from the converse. You can't say if Q then P given if, if, if P then Q, right? You can't say you have a premise of Q and say therefore P. You can't take that thing upstream, but, but, what we should say to kids in then and there is that if P then Q, Q, we can't conclude P, but it does make P more plausible. Mm. It does make it more plausible. And discussions of plausibility and what Cox did, we were talking about Cox early, is he took Paulia's plausibility and was actually able to put it to a, put it to a number line to put it to a value between zero and one, and through these, uh, a handful of desiderata, they're called, um, requirements of consistency and, and not willing to violate common sense, he from that generated all of the fr frequentist statistics, and in fact, you could, you could produce deductive logic from it. And this is, and this is, you know, Garrett says that Cox theorem is the most important thing that's been done in computing or information theory or physics in the past hundred years. And again, I would go to the fruit produced through these methods is about all the evidence you'd need. Are you holding a piece of chalk? No, I've got an eraser. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> It's you, all the way back to gymnastics, you know, to keep your hands off shit when you're chalky. Yeah, yeah. 
gymnasts stand at ease with their hand, back of their hand on their hip, somewhat a gay posture. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yep, yep. You learn not to put your the face of your hand on your pants. So you have a big old handprint on your ass. Fuck, dude. You get some out of uniform shit. Now you see a bunch of oh. cops appropriating it. That that pose. Yeah, I do it too. Whenever I'm like lifting, I just put my hands up. Like. Uh, Allison NYC. I took the subway for the first time in a few years yesterday. I was buying my Metro card for fare to get in. I saw about a dozen other illegals enter. I'm the only one who paid. Yeah, I heard. I heard no one's paying. Crazy. Uh, Sebi, can you ask Heidi if I'm allowed to follow her on IG? You can. I have that authority. I. <laughs> IG's for ogling people. Ogle whoever you want. If you're posting pictures, I mean, get ogled. Um. Yeah, I mean, isn't there, is there, is it a fair assumption that with a low enough cut top, there's not a problem with looking at them? Yes. You see that Conan O'Brien, or is it Conan? Conan O'Brien clip? Yeah. Him and that, him and that woman? Yeah, she's wearing like the lowest cut shirt possible, and her was she jo- was she joking? I think so. Okay, she was kind of just giving him shit for it. But Conan, like, obviously they're head to head, and he just does one of these. She's like up eyes up here. Yeah, and that that that's pretty good. He just it's like, what do you want me to do? They're just there. It's basically porn now on Instagram. It's like it, there's everything now. It's wild. It's it's. Hey, it's are we going to war? Oh, I was gonna bring I was gonna bring that article up. Did you see this? Um which country? Oh, I saw that too. But how about this? Russia intelligence says France preparing to deploy two thousand troops to the Ukraine. Oh boy. And uh, um Caleb, you were were you in the army, Caleb? I was in the Air Force. I still oh, am. that's right. Have you gotten any notices about be- pre- preparation? No, we're not doing shit. I work for the state now, so there, there is, um, there's all, I did see that other thing. Let me see if I can find it. Uh, did you send me that Greg? Yeah. I think I've sent you a couple of things and I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to, I gotta be careful. We're not going to use names here because I don't want to get someone dropped into Kiev, but, uh, um, we have, we have people close to us that are getting called up. Yeah, it says uh, uh, the article here says uh, U.S. Ar- uh, I don't know what this is. I, I, Caleb, you should look at this before we pull, pull this up on the screen to make sure. Which one is it? The first I'm one. Gonna, I'm going to send you a link here. Oh, okay. I'm going to send you a link in the text. Prevailing view is that Biden needs a war if he has any chance at all for election. A U.S. Army publishes <laughs> Al Alaract for utilization of the Army Retiree Recall Program. Oh yeah. I did, I've been hearing about this, too. On March 20th, the U.S. Armacy publishing a directorate published uh, al Karakt. The title of the form is The Utilization of the Army Retiree Recall Program, and it cites Executive Order 13223 under reference. Executive Order 13223 is a Bush-era executive order from September 14, 2001, titled Ordering the Ready Reserve of the Armed Forces to Active Duty and Delegating Certain Authorities to the Secretary of Defense and the Secretary of Transportation. What do you mean? I don't, I don't get exactly what's going on here. <laughs> so basically anybody who's been so retired, this is how I read it. Yeah. Anybody who's been discharged or yeah, who retired or uh, got discharged because they terminated their contract or they got to the end of their contract kind of thing. They're allowed to offer. I, I don't know if they can, if it's an offer to bring them back or if they'll just say, Hey, you're, you're going to be in the reserves now. No, well, some guy was saying he, he was told by the when he, on the checkout, make sure you save your uniform. And now they're telling him, like, really? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah. No, no. There's no. like, they're back in. We've got, I know yeah. people, I know people in, and I know people retiring because we're going to go to war and they don't want to go. Yeah. And I'm sure they're going to have problems getting retired too because they're like, hey, we don't have enough people. We don't have an, any, <laughs> mid-level officers we don't have any mid-level enlisted people we need to every, we need to keep as everybody that we can because you tell me the guy that processes the retirees he quit weird you have to, you have to stay in 
<laughs> he'll he'll be back crazy. after the war. Right, right. Uh, Brady, uh, you can tell we are on the verge of war because the army stopped making the commercials about lesbians and started making ads about badasses again. <laughs> <laughs> I went to the movies the other day and there were like army recruiting commercials and air and I see them on TV with the the Air Force recruiting commercials now too and they're like get into special warfare or whatever and it's it's crazy. We it's it's a new a new light for them. I heard um. I heard some company. I heard Microsoft got rid of the uh, E in DEI. Really? Yeah. What is it now? I just. I guess it's just DI. Just DI. Microsoft uh, DEI. I wonder yeah, if they have it. Undo it slowly. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Here. Yeah. Yeah. Here it is. Microsoft Diversity and Inclusion Report. Yeah, they've dropped the E. They just didn't say anything about it. Now they just they just changed the website. Good for them. Wow. God, can you imagine having a DEI department at your job? Holy shit, dude. Yikes. Uh, Zach, my buddy is a uh, retired combat controller. He may be getting pulled back. Oh, oh for sure, dude. If you're a combat controller, you are, and you've been out for less than five years, you're fucked. What's a combat controller do? It's another uh, like special warfare job. They're like air traffic controllers that like set up landing scripts yeah evacuation exactly they're a pretty big deal that's what joey uh uh in prescott was lauren's friend <laughs> oh 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 really yeah hi i hadn't been i hadn't been to joey's gym or seen him in four or five years and i swung by one day and i walked in and he was in the middle of 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 this murder fantasy of Lord, talking about Lauren, my ex. Oh, gee, what? <laughs> I was like, wow. Holy shit. Wow. And to his members. So the guy stands there and talks about murdering Lauren to his members. Is like just normal course of things. I can tell by the looks in their faces. They weren't, no one was a gas and horror. They've heard it all over and over again. <laughs> uh, Graciano Rubio, BSI flag, uh, now flying in my barn. Um, Exercise dorks can suck it. Uh, dildo, uh, can we get BSI underwear made so I can fly the BSI flag from my barn doors too? My barn doors. Oh, yeah, there it is. Shit. Nice. Wow. That's a sick flag. Equity is the only one they actually meant what they were saying. Hey, what happened to Captain CrossFit? Is it still around? Yeah, I think it is. Oh. I think it is. All right. Another great Wednesday show. Thank I declare, you. It, I declare it a great show. Did you get your violins? Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna get I'm gonna send you some too when you get, get on that on that program. Are do you see are are they within arm's reach of you right now? uh yes did we see one? Oh yeah. shit here we go he got his kids uh carbon fiber violins oh, no, he's, I, 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 I thought that's where we were headed but uh i went to the fiddle shop at the recommendations from our teacher and there was a wooden beginner violin that she pushed for but what was so you that? didn't get those online you walked in and got them no i i went i got them from their store oh you're this look at you i think this oh, is my this is a 4-4. Four, four. This is a full. So two of my kids are going to be. Damn, dude. Holy shit. That is a beautiful violin. <laughs> yeah, I used to play one of those as a little kid. Look just like that. 239 bucks, I think. And I got an upgrade on the strings and the bow. Wow. And we got our Suzuki books. I didn't and, know you could uh, get a violin for that much. I got, I got, I got the four violins, cases, uh, electronic tuner deal uh upgraded strings upgraded bows and i think it was twelve hundred dollars for the four kids is that a violin or a fiddle it's a it's a violin the same thing they are the it's, same thing oh it's held differently oh oh so uh the uh we got a uh a, a half of three quarters and two fulls 
And what's this? Just it's the yeah, length. What's the difference? Yeah. You want to see that the little one? Yeah. Who's playing? The reason's gonna play one. Yeah. That's wild. Here we go. Here's the happy. Yeah, the, the lady. So we got this woman. She's a PhD musicology. Uh, went from Southern Methodist University to uh, Dr. Janice to uh, ASU. And her things are uh, voice, uh, viola, and piano. And here's musicology. The guitar. <laughs> guitar Aww. Violin. Uh, David Weed says uh, violins are kind of gay. Everyone needs a little bit of gay in their life. <laughs> hey, listen, you, you don't want to do any. In the, sense one that, in the sense of like wiping your feet when you come into the house and chewing with your mouth closed. And <laughs> yeah, those are gay too. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Get it. Putting the toilet seat down. Right, right. Damn. Yeah, not peeing on the floor. <laughs> I agree. Those are all gay things. Yeah. I'm gay as fuck. Uh, Joe Westland, they're being sneaky when they say diversity, sneak when they say inclusion, but when they say equity, it's exactly what they mean. They dropped the E because it was too obvious. Still sneaky with the D and I. Sneaky, sneaky. All right. I'm going to go uh, see if my kids are chewing with their mouth closed. Do it. I wish you were here. We'd go to uh, Oscars. Yeah, me too. Perfect. Hey, are you? Or tacos are you gonna you have a uh like seven or eight days before you take off again or any chance you're coming here in that time or no yeah i totally want to okay well i'm my, here. New, truck, my new truck the uh aev in the on a 3500 uh high high output uh, cummings motor yeah that's my favorite truck so listen tomorrow it's supposed to I'm rain here about. tomorrow it's supposed to rain here and then it's like seven days of just sun 70 degrees I'll come out. Yeah, bring 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 a bring your boy. Bring some kids. Bring something. Bring your hot wife. Bring Rhett and Riley. Yeah. I have a I have a meeting with the uh, uh, my builder tomorrow morning. Breakfast meeting, and I think we'll then we'll, so we'll probably come on uh, on Friday. So when do you go to uh, Bora Bora Bora? On the fourteenth, is it? Oh, okay. Yeah, you have plenty of time. I would love yeah. it if you came. Please come. Yeah, let me see you what come, I can. And you're going to come in your new truck? Yeah. Oh, good. All right. Fun. All, All right, right, buddy. I'll see Caleb, you on Thanks. Friday. All right. Good to see you, Greg. Good to see you, kid. Ciao. Hey, congrats on the fire department thing, too. I like that. Thank you. I appreciate that. I don't. I don't. <laughs> it's a great living. Yeah, it'll be I, fun. I got one more thing I got to leave. My, my sister's uh, uh, husband... Daryl, he hates firemen. <laughs> oh, why? Uh, because of how much money they made. He worked for the city, too. And he said he worked twice as hard and made half as much. <laughs> and uh, so he's, 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 always, he's always got some gripe about firemen. Well, they were sitting at their house and they saw a fire um, across the way on the hill. And it wasn't far from the fire department. So he personally called the fire department. And Kathy says, he's, hey, guys, because I hope I didn't bother your checkers. And and they're like, no, dude, we're playing volleyball. And he goes, oh, yes. you know, I was like, it's fucking amazing. And he's like, just looking at Kathy like, but they're, they're sensitive to people like him. <laughs> That's right. It's like, man, we got a good. I, we know we got a good. Yeah, the hill's on fire behind you. <laughs> yeah, we'll get to it. Don't worry. <laughs> Isn't that great? Turn That's on awesome. the hose and blow out the windows in his house. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they they know that there's people that think they don't they don't have they don't work hard enough. But I think it's a I think it's a great thing to do. Be there fat. I knew firemen in Santa Clarita that got rich off of a, a car dealership. Oh, really? Yeah, they just took turns managing the car dealership, and they were oh. doing. They'd sell. They they would sell a hundred Ford Tauruses some weekends. Wow! And that product That's amazing. Was yeah, they were they were raking in bucks. I remember the bye, tours. Bye, Love y'all. Okay, bye. Later, Greg. All right. Another show where 60% of it was over my head. <laughs> I kind of picked up on the probability thing when he started talking about missiles and aircraft. That's when I that's when I started to get smart on it. 
Oh, I'm trying to see. Uh, what's going on with Heidi? Uh, so what happened? Uh, uh, Pat thought that Heidi was hot, and someone else said that like you're not allowed to. Well, yeah, he he said, "Oh, I just looked at Heidi's Instagram. I didn't know." And everybody's like, "Didn't know what?" He, and then he said something like, the "Oh, Heidi come on, smoke show." And oh, then, he did say smoke show. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, well, duh. I like this the still frame for the five by five back squat. It's just the rounding of her butt. <laughs> oh my God, Heidi, what is this? Look at she, she this, that's not even your you don't even have a hook. You don't even have a hook nose. How did you get this? Is this supposed to be you? Dang. Yeah. Caricatured people that's, always fuck people up so bad though. That's um uh that's cultural appropriation. <laughs> Having a hook nose. Yeah, look at look how perfect her nose is. You wish she was a Jew. Look at that's Pat right there, groping Heidi. <laughs> you can't see his left hand, so you don't even know where it's at. Oh my god. He's just he's just now going through all the chicks in the chat. Allison is a babe too. Yep. Hey, it's smart. That's good though. You should you that's good. Take your time. Yeah. Only <laughs> only only creep on one chick a month. That's what I do. Enjoy that. Yeah, spread that shit out. <laughs> <sighs> <sighs> <clears throat> um oh um, Pat, my brother in Christ have fun oh uh oh jr shit jr needs to send born primitive his address Hmm. I like the shows where I get to work on other shit while the show's going. Oh, Everyone yeah. knows that tonight's show got moved to the tenth, right? <clears throat> yeah. Uh, Barbell Spin had to shift it. The burpee, the burpee race. Oh uh, yeah. Yep. And we need uh, Tim Murray, the fittest man in the world, to beat the, uh, Colton and Jake Berman after they do it. Right. We're giving them all the advantages. Yeah. Joe, okay. I, don't, I don't know when the scored interviews are. I think it's at the end of April for me. Um. Uh. Jr. Can you post your mailing address in this thread? Uh. Jim or home. Somebody asked a while back if the test that my wife took is the same as the one that I took yesterday and it's the exact same. There's no differences. And my wife beat me by a minute. Same like weights and distance same, running. They don't got a difference. they don't got a beaver one for just no. beaver. Same same test in its entirety and she beat me by a minute. Smoked me. I I don't I don't say this to uh defend uh CrossFit but a lot of the things that Greg was talking about about crossfit in the early days i mean that's something that only a startup can have and then on top of that um i was thinking about this the other day if you don't have people like greg was like hungry yeah you got a bunch of wealthy fucking people working at your company and shit's not going to get done i mean yeah, yeah. And i know that's not fucking absolute that's not like some definitive rule like if i drop this thing it's going to fall but all, all the, the the wealthier the people were who the people who didn't have kids and had money that's like the that's like the worst that's the worst combination right you want people you want like he was fucking it was his idea and he was hungry as shit and he had a chip on his shoulder that he wanted to fucking let the world know and you get and, and he's smart as fuck and he doesn't sleep so mm -hmm. Uh, uh, he he was supercharged. You get someone, uh, you get some CEO of a company who doesn't need to work for a living. I mean, we had a guy, it, we had an executive at our company who didn't need to work, and that was the weakest. That was the weakest wing of the uh, company. Just for fun. I, I was fucking living in a motorhome. Media department was the strongest department in the company, 
And then on top of the fact you get the training department where everyone just can't even believe their trainers. And so they work their ass off too, right? Everyone's like, holy fuck, I can't believe I have this job. Do you think Greg took less money than he probably should have to like maintain that mentality for himself? Or do you think he was just, he just wanted to give back more money to the, <sighs> to the company, to the affiliates? I don't know. I don't really have an opinion on it. If, if, I, I would say this. Here's what I think he should have done. And I had told him this back in 2009 or 10. And, and I got a lot of pushback from him and Brian. I thought that um, he should have bought RX Bar and Wattify and Spotify and, and Momify. And I, I, th I thought we should have been investing in all the small businesses in the ecosystem and buying them. Sugar Wad, Beyond the Whiteboard, just anything. Uh, right. And I also thought that he should, be, he should have bought um, a home or three homes every year. Like he should have just been leveraging his money to buy property all around the country. Those are right. things like I was always proposing. And, um, and I would get fucking, I would get destroyed. But I would still bring it up, but I would get destroyed by people that basically I would be called a, uh, I'd, I'd be stereotyped, mm. which I enjoyed. Sure. I never reported to the HR department. <laughs> Not once, huh? Hey, at the end of the day, uh, the guy did good for himself. You know, it's like, fuck. Yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> but, but it really is kind of like my buddy had this chick and she always wanted to get plowed in the ass and he'd never did. And when she dumped him, he wishes he had a would have. And you know, like he's gone now and he's like, fuck, I probably should have taken another hundred million out of the company. Yeah. That makes sense. I'm calling Jr. Oh, okay. I think he is a very busy man right now. Why is his wife pregnant or something? No, I think he went down to Disney world or something. Oh. oh, oh, it's weird how sometimes the phone doesn't work. <laughs> yeah, you, I, I could hear you dialing, but I couldn't hear his voicemail or ringing. Yeah, that sucks. Ooh, yeah. Uh, Matt Schindeldecker. There's no question things will continue to change. Costs will increase to affiliates based on the legacy affiliate call that we were invited to Friday. Oh, Oof. Well, you were on that call. Has Matt's gym been around 15 years? How long did you? So what Matt's referring to is I think that there were like 60 gyms. I'm only here. I don't have a, I don't have high fidelity information on this, but I guess there were. Uh, there was a meeting. I'm guessing it was Don, Dave, Nicole, DeCoons, who, whoever whoever works over there at the at the higher ups, and they met with 15 um, 15 year affiliates. They did a giant Zoom call. He said, and I guess that's the call that Greg was referencing. I guess that's the call. Now I'm piecing it together. I guess that's the call that Greg was referencing, where Nicole said. At least you're not having to pay Greg's lifestyle. Man, dude, I'm telling you, the guy. Uh, one of the one, he was being very, one of the things he said about messaging. I mean, that's all. I mean, still to this day, that's what he does for uh, BSI. He really is like Hemingway, Tupac, and Einstein wrapped in one. He's re it's a really remarkable brain. I mean, I I know everyone sees it who listens to him talk. And if you, if you, uh, we have, I, I, maybe only once or twice we've seen him get really loose on this show, but when he gets really loose, the words will start just pouring out. It's fucking amazing. Yeah. It's, and it's hilarious. Uh, and so, and so he, so he knew obviously the, the content for CrossFit inside it out better than anyone else. And so that's what he just kept doing, just kept re in his head. He's just playing with the messaging over and over and over and over. And that's what we got today. Oh. <clears throat> it would be, it would, wouldn't it be crazy if, uh, it, it, it's wild. I, I probably Rosa had no idea. I'm, I'm, I don't know if Don knows either, but just imagine taking the helm from him. You're fucked. You're fucked. <laughs> you have no chance of doing any better than. Yeah. It's like, uh, 
I know people are going to think this is blasphemous, but it would be like um, uh, taking the helm from like Jesus. Like Greg is the CrossFit Jesus. There won't, there will not be another one. It's just not, it's, it's, it's really is like that. I don't mean it to be blasphemous, but. Um, I mean, you see what's happening now. The people who have taken over, they're losing sight of what was being not, built. Well, well, yeah, but, but it's not even their fault. They're ill-equipped, right? Right. Right. I mean, you're taking the helm from like Einstein. Yes. I was thinking that too. It'd be like putting me in charge. Literally it would be like putting me in charge of the physics department at UC Berkeley. Yeah. You're a DEI hire because you're Armenian. Yeah. yeah. And five, five and, and short for a man. Right. Exactly. I wonder if you, uh, um, DEI short people. I wonder if we get any, um, does, oh, look at Does diversity include height? Although the term is often used to refer to differences based on race, ethnicity, gender, age, religion, disability, national origin, and sexual orientation, diversity encompasses an infinite range of individuals' unique characteristics and experiences, including communication styles, physical characteristics, such as, fuck. Oh, who falls under DEI? Fuck. Oh, you're a DEI veteran status. Wow, really? Yeah. I know I get extra points with the fire department with, in the hiring process. It was funny. Oh, somebody somebody was trying, uh, somebody was talking about how it's kind of bullshit that veterans get extra points to, to get onto certain fire departments or law enforcement and shit like that. And I don't think, I don't think so. You don't think it's bullshit? No, I don't think it's bullshit. I don't, I don't, in, in my mind, I'm like, fuck, I don't care. But then now I think about all the shit that, I had to put up with for the past five years and like the things that I guess learned or whatever. And I'm like, yeah, I guess I probably deserve that. Yeah. I, I don't think it's bullshit. At all. Hello caller. Hey, what's up? Hey, phone's working. Good. Good. Nice. Hey, good morning. Hey, you're welcome. What is, I know we always talk about like having stuff affect you and you shouldn't let stuff bother you. It's your fault that bothers you, but something really, really is bothering me that I just heard today. Please. I'm you know how we you. had this, you know how we had this total eclipse coming? Yeah, yeah. Only for the middle so, of the country, though. California, we're we don't we're not we're not doing it. Yeah, so like New York is kind of like on the path. If you go like upstate New York, like like near Buffalo, which is far from where I am. But can you believe that the school districts on my, in my area they're looking to close schools? Because there are sick kids will leave school and look at the sun and burn their eyes out. And I'm not kidding. There are meetings going on right now talking about the total eclipse of the sun and if they should cancel classes today. Let me ask you this really quick. Why? So is there any difference in looking at a solar eclipse versus just looking directly at the sun? Isn't, isn't looking at a solar eclipse less... If the sun's bad to look at, wouldn't a, uh, an eclipse be a better time to look at it? Like, well, why yeah, aren't you supposed to I look don't... at a solar eclipse? Is it for any other reason besides the fact that you're just told not to look at the sun? I think you can I look at know, a solar but... eclipse, but not a lunar eclipse. Who gives a fuck? Ronnie Teasdale fucking stares at the sun all the time. He even lets his butthole stare at the sun whenever he wants. Yeah. Hey, uh, Jethro, why are they, um, why are, first of all, I absolve you from feeling bad or, uh, upset about it. So you're free from that. There you Thank go. Thank you very much. Yep. No problem. Thank you. And, um, why are they declaring state of emergency in some places where this is happening? I was trying to figure that out. I, I, I have no idea. Like I, I have a lot of teachers that take the morning class and they're all talking and they're in meetings to discuss what's the best protocol. Should it be a half day? Should be a full day off. Should we cancel? No, everyone should program? go outside with their astronomy books and listen and get lectured on what's happening. And and they should have every school should have a debate between flat Earth and round Earth. I, th I want to say the stair the the state of emergency was because they're thinking a lot of people are going to flock to that those regions where it's going to be a total eclipse or some shit. That's Even my wife wanted to go upstate where they go every summer to go see it, and I'm like. Can you, I, the traffic to come back down to New York's crew, everyone's going to go upstate. They're going to be there till about four o'clock in the afternoon and they're all going to come back down. What would take like a three hour drive and it take like seven hours. Yeah. I, so uh, stupid. I can't believe it. 
I I I want to. I, I I wish. I, I mean, I if it was here, I would be. I would definitely try to like make a note and go outside mm -hmm. and see it. Um, I think it's it's cool, right? Um, and I think it it's uh, I think for people who get to see it, it's fun. I think it, hey, these are the things. I, I truly think this Jethro. I think these are the things like. Although nuanced are really powerful to a human being. It's basically the moon's passing between the earth and the sun. That's what's happening. And it's blocking out the sun. Yeah. Yeah. That's fucking cool as shit. Look at Jeffrey Birchfield. We're doing a lesson on it and we're going to football fields to observe it here in fuckville. All right. Yeah, exactly. But they're not canceling school because of it. No canceling. That's smart. School. Yeah. That, yeah, totally. If you cancel school, then it loses the importance and nobody cares to go out and look hey, at it. Hey, they should do this, about. Jethro. They should do it if you it should be Father Sunday and only kids that have dads get to go out and look at it. That's a great idea. Hey, because hey, we are we are me. those kids are a minority. <laughs> hey, what if you got hired for Jeez. DEI because you had a uh, a dad? Oh my god, oh my you have god, a dad? I just passed the sign. Guys, I just passed the sign. I'm driving back home. It said Lunar Eclipse Monday. Use mass transit. Oh, please. I'm not kidding. We have to use mass transit that day. Oh, my God. Stay home, make what a sandwich, and look out the window. Good luck sitting in the subway. Oh, you guys. All right. Well, I if if you get if you if you if anyone has a chance to see it, feel free to look up directly at it just for a second or two. It's fine. I don't think you have to like do that thing where you poke a hole in a bag or whatever that shit is. I think that's probably just. Oh, I, I remember that. I remember those days. We had to cover our books with uh, the brown paper bags. Same yeah. Thing. And then I just wrote girls' names on it. Why is it bad to look at eclipse? Um, let me hold on one second. Let me let me get to the bottom of this. If it's just because it's this uh, exposing your eyes to the sun without proper eye protection during a solar eclipse can cause a, eclipse blindness or retinal burns, also known as solar retino, retinopathy. This exposure to the light can cause damage or even destroy cells in the retina, the back of the eye that transmits what you've seen. But why solar eclipse versus just looking at the sun? Why is it unsafe to look at solar uh Solar eclipse versus uh yeah, I don't get I don't get what the difference is. Pat says if you go blind from oh, eyes, your eyes are huge pussies. So yeah. I, I, it's all dumb. Everything's dumb. The people who are in charge, they don't do crossfit. You get a little tougher. Oh, here's an article. If you look directly at a solar eclipse, you will be rich, guaranteed. Well. Wow. That's what the government doesn't want you to know. Uh, <laughs> oh, great. Uh, the case of the Staten Island woman who watched the eclipse through faulty glasses was notable enough to be chronicled by doctors from Mount Sinai's New York Eye and Ear Infirmary. It's a very focused beam of high energy light from the sun itself. Oh, so it's more focused? Why, that doesn't make sense. Science. She believed she was wearing protective glasses, but she wasn't. <laughs> looking looking up when you're within the 115-mile-wide path when the moon completely covers the sun for a few minutes is safe, ex experts say, but directly staring at the sun before and after the total eclipse or watching partial eclipse outside of the path. Oh, so you can look at it except for right before and right after when it's just seeping over the edges? That's the best time to look at it. Well, rare eye damage from watching a partial eclipse happens because a person's natural response to squint when looking at the sunlight does not get triggered. In the lead up to the April 8th solar eclipse, doctors and a rare set of eclipse watchers are warning about. Okay, so it's really rare, and it sounds like it's not any different than looking directly at the sun, but it's just the fact that you won't be squinting. Jesus Christ, just say that for fuck's sake. Hey, be careful. It's just... It's like we were talking about with the recipes. The high energy rays cast down during the time. During the time, they're always being cast down. Are akin to laser pinpoint on the eye. Yeah, like I don't get it. I'm not getting it. 
A very safe way to watch is to turn your back to the eclipse and watch its shadows using a pinhole. Uh, how about fuck no? Turn your back to it. Childhood friends of Lou Tomoski and Roger Duvall, both 77, have told cautionary tales for years about the day in the early 1960s when each of them burned an eye, squinting up a partial, squinting up at a partial eclipse. The two men, teenagers at the time, watched without protection from a baseball diamond at their high school in Portland, Oregon. After looking at the clips for about 20 seconds, they developed a grayish spot in the middle of his right eye. While Duvall now has a similar dark spot in his left eye, Duvall said he visited a doctor the day after the eclipse when he noticed his vision loss. I don't know. Are you going to look at it, Jethro? Oh, is he gone? Oh. I didn't even hear him hang up. Bye, Jethro. I'm going to look at it. I think our air raid uh, sirens are going off. Is that a test or? It's probably real. Oh. Yeah, because that's where they'd attack Nebraska. Yep. Dead center. Oh, shit. J.K. Lance. It's not the... Uh... Sun that they don't want you to see. It's the one time you'll see the flat earth phenomenon. Wow. <laughs> wow. Wow. Okay. Oh. He gave us a kiss goodbye. Mwah. Oh, sorry. I missed it. I guess uh, Jedediah Snelson's going on Pedro's show today. Yeah. yeah. At uh, 12 Pacific Standard Time for the uh, Around the Whiteboard. Hey, did you see the video Hiller made two days ago? Uh, was, it was it about Sporty Beth? Or was it yesterday? No, not the Sporty Beth one. This the one. one. Uh, uh, no, it is yesterday. Holy shit, dude. This is a crazy video. I do not know how. I guess I get it why this video um, only has 12,000 views, but oh my God. This one? Biggest yes. issue with CrossFit? Yes. Yes. You got. Let's look at the comments. So basically, basically, someone critiqued Hiller being like, hey, you shouldn't be um, judging people who aren't high level competitors with no reps. And he fucking goes off, and it's amazing. Look at and look at all these people supporting him, dude. It's crazy. It's such a good video. It's like the best mess. This is this is this is his best video ever, guys. Uh this is his best video ever. Basically, at one point, the premise is is if someone comes in and they're 80 years old and they can't squat below parallel, that's fine. You tell them, good job, good job, good job. But you also tell them, hey, you say good effort, good effort, good effort. But you don't tell them good job until they're 90, 10 years later when they first get their first squat to full depth. And you don't argue your limitations for your clients and you keep working on it with them. Because the point is to squat below parallel. And that when the open comes, that's when you not only, because that's not just going to your affiliate just to work out. When the, when the open comes, it's a, uh, there's, there's actually standards. And at that point, everyone has to also have their standards tested. It's like what he said to, um, hip and steel. He said, Hey dude, great job on the fucking muscle ups, but, but you can't enter the open if you can't lock out your fucking elbow. Right. No one's questioning your, uh, your, uh, capacity. Your capacity. Your yeah. Yeah. Your cat capacity or your engine or your strength. But look, n now we're in the competition phase and there's, um, they're standards. It's 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 fucking awesome. We shouldn't feel bad for you just because you're the old guy, you know. Like there yeah, are people who are your age who are, are doing the exact same thing, holding the standard. Yeah, this video is incredible. And and basically, that's one of the things you want to be able to do as a trainer. You want to be able to tell your eighty year old client, "Hey, here you are when you're eighty, and here when you're ninety, and look at you've increased your range of motion. You can now squat below parallel at ninety. It's not about whether it's a rep or a no rep. 
It's about your your functional ability. Your you can squat to depth. You can do a push up to depth. You can wipe your own boat. You can wipe your own ass. You can pick up your kid. Are we done with the boat? Is the boat thing over? Okay. I watched a bunch of conspiracy oh. shit about the boat, and it was like took me five minutes to prove it all wrong. It was crazy. Somebody said that the there are still crew members on board. Just oh, who ha oh, I believe it. You mean who yeah. just haven't got off the boat? Yeah, I guess. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm telling you, it, the Haley Adams was not the best video ever. It was not. I'm telling you. You got to watch that video, his most recent video. It's crazy. What's the name of it? Um, uh, biggest problem with CrossFit. Biggest yeah, issue with CrossFit parentheses currently. I mean, it'll explain so much to you. Yeah. Okay, here we go. On the navigation bridge, and I'm standing in front of the helm here, which is where we steer the ship. There are two steering gears. We have a uh, number one steering gear and number two steering gear. These will alternate every day. Even days we try to run the number two pump, and odd days we run the number one pump. So you can see uh, today's the 16th. That's an even day. So we have the number two pump running. Whenever we're coming in and out of port, we always have the number one pump on, though, because that's attached to the emergency bus. So if we lost power, the emergency diesel generator would turn on and it would still give us power to our steering. Coming in and out of port, we always have the number one pump on, though, because that's attached to the emergency bus. So if we lost power, 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 the emergency diesel generator would turn on and it would still give us power to our steering, it still give us power. And then this guy responds in the comments, which is a great response. Uh, they had a backup power that was delayed. The black smoke was from the generators. That makes sense, right? Remember that black smoke we saw come out right before it hits? Sure. Yeah. Um, the black smoke was from the generators when the ship went into reverse, but it was too close to actually slow down and reverse. And they had steering partially, which is why the ship made a hard turn before it hit. Yeah, I heard they tried to throw it in reverse, and then that's why it like canted off into the bridge like that. Well, moral of the story is, um, I get, I guess one of the one of the conspiracy theories uh, I read was is that um, the owner of that shipping company died six days before it was a uh, Asian woman died six days before that, 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 uh, that accident before the boat ran into the bridge. But, um, it, what it said happened is her Tesla went in reverse by itself and she drove into a lake. I'm like, listen, there's nothing odd about an Asian woman accidentally driving in reverse into a lake. <laughs> like, come on, man. Oh shit. And then I looked further and she wasn't even the CEO of the boat company. So uh, as an avid conspiracy content appreciator, conspiracies content has been flooded with absolute junk here lately. And if, uh, and if it's being, and if it's being pumped in, yeah, I agree. I, I just recently started using Twitter just like in the explore page, just scrolling through it. And I don't know if it's just because of the few posts that I've clicked on, but it is just nonsense. Conspiracy theories, just ad nauseum. There was one uh, video of Angela Merkel like standing next to the Ukrainian president or some Ukrainian person, and they were like, sh and she was just like shaking uncontrollably. And uh, I was like, "What?" The and everybody was making a big deal about it, like and stuff that had been posted within Is she hours. Just still the president or premier no. of Germany? No, okay, no. Okay. And but people were posting it like it was like brand new news. And so I would, oh, yeah, yeah. I, and I, so then I was, I was like, well, this is all bullshit. And I kept scrolling and I found something else, same thing, went and Googled it, like 10 year old article or 10 year old video, same thing. I just, it's just recycled nonsense on Twitter. <laughs> I can't, like, I can't even trust that there's anything good on there. I know it, it's tough. Hey, well, Instagram is even worse. Instagram is yeah. worse. But it's, but, but the cool thing is, is it's pretty easy to fact check pretty quick. Like, yeah, you'd be like, okay, here's a couple of weird inconsistencies. Like, she's not even the CEO of that boating company. Right. Shit like that. Or she didn't die six days ago. She died six years ago. I think yeah. I already played this. I'll play it again anyway. This is uh, Jillian Michaels uh, on Bill Maher. This Here we go. So good. I get Gavin to run for president for a very long uh, time. And are you serious? Uh, are we living in Gavin Newsom's California? 
Why? Yeah, and I'm sure your life is just a I nightmare. I left because of him. Did it affect your is life? Is the crime affecting our lives? Is, is the homelessness is crime, affecting our was lives? Was crime affecting your life My, here Yeah, in absolutely. My house got broken into. Your house got broken into. Yes. <laughs> Guess who let the guy out during COVID? Newsom. It was the guy's third offense. He broke into our house. He had duct tape and a video camera. Anyway, long story, but he third strike, guy goes to jail, gets let out during COVID. I mean, give me a fucking break. You're not going to hold PG&E accountable for that fire in 2018. Yeah. You're going to decriminalize everything but regulate nothing. You're prioritizing the crazy shit I've ever seen in my life. My thing with Gavin is, first of all, he can win. Uh, first of all, I just like him. We handled Good. COVID. We have not for, was the not last for it. state to reopen. Not, not for it. Shut it's, the schools for not, not, not Bill Maurer likes him because he can win. You know how tarted he sounds? Isn't that crazy? He <laughs> only cares if the crime has affected him. Oh, and there's a part even further on. He's like, you're worried about the dandruff. Does he have no kids? Does he have no kids? I don't know. Let me look. God, he is such a bitch. God, he's such a bitch. Imagine that. How does he have his own TV show if that's his best argument? Man, to get uh, schooled by okay. Jillian fucking Michaels is crazy. Wife, no kids. Yep, he talks like someone who has no kids. No wife, no kids. Yeah, he's yeah. He talks like a complete fucking idiot. He did it really he's, affect he's, you? He's such a fucking douche. For it. mind you, with no mask I on know. at the French Laundry after saying oh, you see, can't... again, you are just you're obsessing I'm not, again though. about what the, was done the, right. You're Look at how she's pointing the facts out, and he's attacking her. So he doesn't have any facts, so he has to attack her character. Yeah, of course. I have no fact. Listen, dude, you just said you your your major premise, your opening line of your paragraph is you like him because he can win. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? <laughs> yeah, I like Alabama because they can win too, but oh my god. Hey, he did he'd been on Hitler's side. Right. Absolutely. Ah, oh, Hitler. Hitler looked, why do you like Hitler? Because he can win. Jesus. Thing about the dandruff. If he was he a went to the C wrong o -O. restaurant. Really? Yeah. This is it, he like didn't again. Didn't follow his own rules. Get, if you're going to be I a leader, it. you lead by example. That's a fucking dandruff. Trying to get Gavin to run for president for a very I'm worried about the dandruff. The dandruff. Yeah, her went to the being wrong. broken into or possibly getting like raped and kidnapped. Yeah, no, that's that's just dandruff, dude. It's cool. Uh, Bill Maher keeps getting destroyed over and over on his podcast. Riley Gaines, PBD, Jillian Mike. Maybe he's doing it on purpose. Maybe. Maybe he's doing it on I mean, purpose. Those, those three will just, they'll fuck anybody up. Yeah, I saw Patrick Bed David on there. That was awesome. Here's the thing, too. Bill needs to stop drinking and smoking on his show. Oh, didn't somebody ask him? Not? Oh, um, the dude from Jackass. He asked him to stop smoking weed on this, or if he would just not smoke weed on the show because uh, he's he's sober. Yeah, what that fucking guy's name, um, Stevo or some shit. Evo, yeah, because he's sober. He like doesn't drink, doesn't smoke nothing. He asked him if he would stop drinking and smoking on for their show together, and he's like, "No, I'm not gonna do that." And he's like, "Uh, okay, well, <laughs> I'm just not gonna do your show then." Oh, so he didn't do it. Yeah, he's like, fuck you. That's crazy. Steve, oh, there you go. Uh, let me play one more, one more thing here. Did you, I watched the, um, I watched the, uh, Oh, I'm gonna save this. I'm gonna save this for when Greg's on. I watched the. Uh, I watched the pot. Did you watch um, uh, Brian interview Fraser? No, I haven't had a chance to yet. Is any good? Yeah, it's good. It's good. Uh, it. Uh, I don't know if "good" is the right word. It's say it's good. Yeah, it's good. It's good. But there's something in there in the middle that's fucking wild to me. Really? Yeah. What was it? You want to say? I kind of want to show you. Um, it is so fucking wild. It is so wild. 
there's two things he says, and he says both of them, like, uh, Fraser says both of them, like, in a 30-second window. And I'm just fucking floored. I'm just floored. Because he said it? Yeah, I just, <clears throat> I don't, like, I, I can't, I can't process, I can't process, uh, like, quiet part out loud kind of thing? Yeah, it's like, dude, like, where where have you lived? Like it's it's like he says these two things, and I feel like I want to ask Fraser if he lives on the moon. He does. Um, I should time code it and, and and show it. I should do a news show. But basically, at one point, he says he's talking. He's going to uh, an event in Fargo this week. It's called the uh, Able Games or something. Able uh, Games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With with all the and he and says all. um he says uh these this event needs more um by the way matt has it, it, it to, to, it's the most relaxed i've seen matt but you i can still tell he's not fully relaxed like he's not free like it's not and i and i don't i don't mean to put anyone under this judgment but you can't go anywhere in conversation with him there's rules there's bumpers and that's like that with a lot of people and it's fine but you, but i can see them and feel them and so when you get too close to one of the bumpers the te- you can see the tension kind of escalates right an mm-hmm. example would be like well when uh coaching brooke wells comes up or patrick clark asks him a question like hey do you keep track of kind of what's going on in the crossfit community and he swerves off into this area that i don't think i haven't talked to patrick about it that i don't think patrick was referencing and so he tries to stay in this pretty benign, safe lane, right? And, but there's a part in there in the middle where, uh, you could, uh, Harley mom, I couldn't get through the uh, Fraser interview. It was boring. That's a nice motorcycle. Yeah, it was okay. I, I, I mean, <clears throat> I listened to it one and a quarter time while I was uh, driving my kids to and from tennis, but, but, but I was, I, but I also like looking to collect news and stories and shit, but I didn't think it was bad by any means. And it was nice to hear from Matt. I haven't heard from him in a long time. Maybe it was 1.5 speed. I'm not sure. But, um, there was a point in there where he talks about the able games and he said, Hey, things like this deserve way more notoriety or something attention. like that attention okay and i'm just tripping because once again you have matt who's the most popular guy in crossfit with the most followers with the biggest agent matt o'keefe with the biggest management company and yet jason hopper's got seventy thousand followers on instagram and he hasn't been on matt fraser's instagram in 74 weeks or whatever i just like it's and you do things like this a m- 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 mush campaign and these athletes do this mush campaign it's like you, there's zero authenticity there's zero desire to really uh it, it doesn't look like anyone's trying to promote anyone or anything to me yeah he'll promote mush but he so won't promote the weigh in on something that it's not does isn't getting not enough attention i'm like dude you have the biggest platform in the space and you look like you're just promoting one thing which is fine it's his it's i'm, I'm not uh, it's his to promote himself which is himself but it's like dude like i don't i I really don't want to hear anyone like i don't hear any of the fucking agents or athletes or anyone weigh in on that subject anymore when i don't see them doing shit and 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 in his defense brian also and patrick bring up like hey you do a lot of things that people don't see you do like i didn't know he went and um what's that called when uh uh like comedians go and entertain officers on jokes and shit you know what that's oh, called? Oh, like, USO, like a USO, USO event. Yeah, he'd done five USO tours. Like that, cool, right? Yeah. And I didn't know, like, um, uh, um, their company gives away five thousand dollars a month. Oh, HWPO really? PO does, yeah. To like, I don't know to what, but it, but I think it's like, like I imagine it as being like school. Like, if your school needs gym equipment, um, HWPO gives a five thousand dollar grant a month, which is awesome. Fuck, I mean, so there maybe there is tons of great shit he's doing, but okay, fine. Uh, but the the promotion that I see from agent and management and based on what i'm looking at is just horrible then here's the second thing he said and this is the thing that blew my mind and it was right after that he said and did you know that the number one leading cause of death amongst the i think he calls them in needs community like people in needs i think he means like uh, disabled and retarded people and things like that Mm. 
is uh, obesity. Really? And I'm like, holy fuck! Does he know that disabled people also that they're no, that they also drink water, that they're bipedal, that they breathe oxygen? Like, you're telling me that you've been in CrossFit for fucking ten or fifteen years, and you didn't know the number one leading cause of death amongst just everyone in the United States is obesity. You didn't know that type two diabetes, heart disease, coronary disease is all code for you're a fat fuck. You have a fucking refined carbohydrate addict. Pro, uh, you're a refined carbohydrate addict. And he's shocked that that's the number one cause of death for retards. I'm just like, what the fuck? He said it blew his hair back or something. Who says that? I don't know, but I mean, I'm glad he knows now. But like, dude, do you not know that that's what Greg's been saying ad nauseum for fucking 15 years? We have the cure for the world's most vexing problem. What did he think that was? He thought that disabled people were uh, exempt from fucking being obese. I just, dude, it, listen, for anyone who doesn't know, the leading cause of death in the United States is stuff that you're putting in this mouth. It's the leading cause of premature death and death. That's it. It doesn't matter whether you're retarded. It doesn't matter. Like, it's probably the leading cause for dogs, too, even. Doesn't matter if you're gay, doesn't matter if you're black, doesn't matter if you're white. That is the leading cause of death. Eating refined carbohydrates. Eating sugar. Yeah, it's even worse with that. Institutionalized uh, individuals are fed absolute trash. Yeah, and then he goes on to say that they don't have access to gym equipment, blah, 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 and, and resources. It's like, dude, it's like. <sighs> it's the rest of the world, too. And hey, and here's the thing, too, just to tie this up. I'm I'm very happy that Matt is aware of that now and that hopefully he just sees that that's the problem worldwide and like you don't need to even look at individual you don't need to look at groups just focus on individuals don't start doing the group thing you're going to end up down the DEI path and you're going to fuck yourself you're going to turn into a fucking homophobe racist piece of shit you don't want to do that just focus on that message in its totality it actually does include everyone people in wheelchairs people who are too tall people who are too short it's everyone Yeah, you can. Yeah, eat as much lettuce as you want, Jeffrey. You're good to go. Fucking just go. You can just walk right up to a tree and bite out the side of a, a tree. Excuse me. Is, yeah, yeah. Go for it. Yeah. As much broccoli as you want. Mexicans, too. You guys are triply fucked. Too many, right? Too much rice and beans. I just, when he said that, I'm like, man, he really doesn't, he really did have his head down and was living in a fucking cave. Yeah. I mean, he trained at an affiliate for a little bit, too. I, I doubt he even took notice of what was going on in there. Yeah, just I was just tripping. I was like, wait, did he really just say that? Even in hospitals, uh, uh, Matt, even in hospitals, the, the go-to drink is Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola, I'll have a Coca-Cola for dinner, a Popeye, and a slice of cheesecake. I'm in here for my uh, amputation for my type 2 diabetes. That's right. Yeah. Got to keep those sugars up. They keep beer on stock too, you know, for those alcoholics. Do they really? Yeah. You can Hospitals prescribe do? beer for people uh, who are going through, they're like going through uh, withdrawals. If they start getting therapy. Again, Matt lives in a self-imposed bubble. Okay. Well, I guess then uh, welcome outside the bubble now and um, you're about to trip. Welcome to the real world, buddy. Yeah. And that's fine. I was, I was just shocked. I'm not mad at him or hating on him. I'm just completely, utterly shocked that you could be in this space and not know that the, that the Greg's message to the affiliates for the last 10 years is we, you have the cure for the world's most vexing problem. And that was uh, uh, stuffing your face, getting fat, and then having doctors diagnose you with some bullshit that they try to fix the bullshit instead of you changing what you're eating. Here's another thing uh, uh, that someone should tell Matt, too, if you get a chance, is that you can't exercise away a bad diet. Boy, maybe that's why he didn't know that, that telling the world that he eats Snicker bars and drinks Coca-Cola was weird. On Joe Rogan? Maybe that's why he was like, what? What's wrong with that? I don't know why everybody took that seriously. I, that's, that's what I did all the time. There are these people out there, and I get it. 
that will not promote anything without being paid for it. I fully understand that. But remember, but remember, to, in order to be that way, all of your authenticity, equity has been used up. If we know that you'll only sell stuff that you're paid to sell, that anytime you do try to say something authentic, we will not believe you. Or the smartest people in the room won't believe you because of predictive value. Let me repeat that again. If you will only, if you will only promote stuff that you get paid to promote or that benefits you, You are burning your authenticity equity. It doesn't happen to me very often, but every once in a while, someone will say some dumb shit. I'll see it in the comments. I saw it on the Daniel Brandon video we did, and they go, oh, look at these idiots just doing clicks and views. And it reminds me of the time that um, I filmed, uh, I, I've told you guys a story before where I filmed um, this car drove into this crowd of people and killed a bunch of the people. And the guy jumped out in, of the car and screamed, I'm the angel of death. And I filmed it. And I, for fucking three years prior to that, never left my house without my big ass video camera. Never. And so to call me an ambulance chaser or an opportunist really fucking pissed me off because my whole thing was to film and what was happening in this one town and to make TV shows from it. And so when these fucking idiots are like, say stuff to me, like you'll just do stuff for clicks or you'll just do stuff for views. Like just look at the fucking huge library of, of uh, videos that Caleb Souza and I have made. And if you think that we're just doing stuff for views and clicks, then we're fucking stupid. Either we're stupid or you're stupid. You're either incredibly stupid for thinking that or we're really bad at getting views and clicks. Really bad. Yeah. All right. Uh, love you guys. I'm trying to get Patrick Vellner on Saturday pretty excited it's been a, it's been a minute since i talked to him i think he's coming on saturday morning uh tomorrow jimmy watson holy shit oh david weed we're all stupid how generous of you uh jimmy watson's coming on tomorrow i'm just doing that show for views and clicks oops did i say that out loud uh it's gonna be cool <laughs> this is the guy um he worked for blackwater i can't wait to hear his uh story he was also a seal and then um and then um and then Shut Up and Scribble is on tomorrow evening. And then Friday, Friday's Jay Cooey. So here's something interesting about Friday's show. Uh, Friday's show will probably, if you don't see that show live, you'll have to go over to Rumble and watch it after. Uh, Jay, Jay uh, is crazy smart. I met him through um, Greg, and Greg met him through Rodney Mullen. And uh, I think he was, may have worked for the children's health defense fund for a while, or maybe was the head of it. And, uh, I also want to say that maybe I need to review my JQE resume, but I th want to say maybe he was a physics teacher at some university or biology teacher. Anyway, PhD smart guy. He's been on the show before. He says some, some shit that's like, uh, that YouTube does not like. So you want to see that show. Uh, and Jay DeCoons will be on Sunday. No, Whoa. No. Dang it. Yeah, Rodney Mullen, the skater. Yes, correct. All right. Love you guys. See you guys later. Oh, don't forget to watch uh, Pedro's show today. I want to say it's at 12. Bye-bye.